The Book of Jasher, Chapter 48 In those days, after the death of Isaac, the Lord commanded and caused a famine upon the whole earth. At that time, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, was sitting upon his throne in the land of Egypt, and lay in his bed, and dreamed dreams. And Pharaoh saw in his dream that he was standing by the side of the river of Egypt. And whilst he was standing, he saw, and behold, seven fat-fleshed and well-favored kine come up out of the river. And seven other kine, lean-fleshed and ill-favored, came up after them, and the seven ill-favored ones swallowed up the well-favored ones, and still their appearance was ill as at first. And he awoke, and he slept again, and he dreamed a second time, and he saw, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good, and seven thin ears blasted with the east wind sprang up after them, and the thin ears swallowed up the full ones, and Pharaoh awoke out of his dream. And in the morning the king remembered his dreams, and his spirit was sadly troubled on account of his dreams. And the king hastened, and sent, and called for all the magicians of Egypt, and the wise men, and they came and stood before Pharaoh. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed dreams, and there is none to interpret them. And they said unto the king, Relate thy dreams to thy servants, and let us hear them. And the king related his dreams to them. And they all answered and said with one voice to the king, May the king live forever, and this is the interpretation of thy dreams. The seven good kind which thou didst see denote seven daughters that will be born unto thee in the latter days, and the seven kind which thou sawest come up after them, and swallowed them up, are for a sign that the daughters which will be born unto thee will all die in the lifetime of the king. And that which thou didst see in the second dream of seven full good ears of corn coming up upon one stalk, this is their interpretation, that thou wilt build unto thyself in the latter days seven cities throughout the land of Egypt, and that which thou sawest of the seven blasted ears of corn springing up after them and swallowing them up whilst thou didst behold them with thine eyes is for a sign that the cities which thou wilt build will all be destroyed in the latter days, in the lifetime of the king. And when they spoke these words, the king did not incline his ear to their words, neither did he fix his heart upon them, for the king knew in his wisdom that they did not give a proper interpretation of the dreams. And when they had finished speaking before the king, the king answered them, saying, What is this thing that you have spoken unto me? Surely you have uttered falsehood and spoken lies. Therefore now give the proper interpretation of my dreams that you may not die. And the king commanded after this, and he sent and called again for other wise men. And they came and stood before the king, and the king related his dreams to them. And they all answered him according to the first interpretation. And the king's anger was kindled, and he was very wroth. And the king said unto them, Surely you speak lies and utter falsehood in what you have said. And the king commanded that a proclamation should be issued throughout the land of Egypt, saying, It is resolved by the king and his great men that any wise man who knoweth and understandeth the interpretation of dreams, and will not come this day before the king, shall die. And the man that will declare unto the king the proper interpretation of his dreams, there shall be given unto him all that he will require from the king. And all the wise men of the land of Egypt came before the king, together with all the magicians and sorcerers that were in Egypt, and in Goshen, in Ramses, in Takpanches, in Zoar, and in all the places on the borders of Egypt, they all stood before the king. And all the nobles and the princes, and the attendants belonging to the king, came together from all the cities of Egypt, and they all sat before the king. And the king related his dreams before the wise men and the princes, and all that sat before the king were astonished at the vision. And all the wise men who were before the king were greatly divided in their interpretation of his dreams. Some of them interpreted them to the king, saying, The seven good kind are seven kings, who from the king's issue will be raised over Egypt. And the seven bad kind are seven princes, who will stand up against them in the latter days and destroy them. And the seven ears of corn are the seven great princes belonging to Egypt, who will fall in the hands of the seven less powerful princes of their enemies in the wars of our lord the king. And some of them interpreted to the king in this manner, saying, The seven good kind are the strong cities of Egypt, and the seven bad kind are the seven nations of the land of Canaan, who will come against the seven cities of Egypt in the latter days and destroy them. And that which thou sawest in the second dream, of seven good and bad ears of corn, is a sign that the government of Egypt will again return to thy seed as at first. And in his reign, the people of the cities of Egypt will turn against the seven cities of Canaan who are stronger than they are, and will destroy them, and the government of Egypt will return to thy seed. And some of them said unto the king, 
This is the interpretation of thy dreams. The seven good kind are seven queens, whom thou wilt take for wives in the latter days, and the seven bad kind denote that those women will all die in the lifetime of the king. And the seven good and bad ears of corn which thou didst see in the second dream are fourteen children, and it will be in the latter days that they will stand up and fight amongst themselves, and seven of them will smite the seven that are more powerful. And some of them said these words unto the king, saying, The seven good kind denote that seven children will be born to thee, and they will slay seven of thy children's children in the latter days. And the seven good ears of corn, which thou didst see in the second dream, are those princes against whom seven other less powerful princes will fight and destroy them in the latter days, and avenge thy children's cause, and the government will again return to thy seed. And the king heard all the words of the wise men of Egypt, and their interpretation of his dreams, and none of them pleased the king. And the king knew in his wisdom that they did not altogether speak correctly in all these words. For this was from the Lord to frustrate the words of the wise men of Egypt, in order that Joseph might go forth from the house of confinement, and in order that he should become great in Egypt. And the king saw that none amongst all the wise men and magicians of Egypt spoke correctly to him, and the king's wrath was kindled, and his anger burned within him. And the king commanded that all the wise men and magicians should go out from before him, and they all went out from before the king with shame and disgrace. And the king commanded that a proclamation be sent throughout Egypt to slay all the magicians that were in Egypt, and not one of them should be suffered to live. And the captains of the guards belonging to the king rose up, and each man drew his sword, and they began to smite the magicians of Egypt and the wise men. And after this, Mirad, chief butler to the king, came and bowed down before the king and sat before him. And the butler said unto the king, May the king live forever, and his government be exalted in the land. Thou wast angry with thy servant in those days, now two years past, and thou didst place me in the ward, and I was for some time in the ward, I and the chief of the bakers. And there was with us a Hebrew servant belonging to the captain of the guard. His name was Joseph, for his master had been angry with him and placed him in the house of confinement, and he attended us there. And in some time after, when we were in the ward, we dreamed dreams in one night. I and the chief of the bakers, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And we came in the morning and told them to that servant, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream did he correctly interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so was the event. There fell not to the ground any of his words. And now, therefore, my lord and king, do not slay the people of Egypt for naught. Behold, that slave is still confined in the house by the captain of the guard, his master, in the house of confinement. If it pleaseth the king, let him send for him, that he may come before thee, and he will make known to thee the correct interpretation of the dream which thou didst dream. And the king heard the words of the chief butler, and the king ordered that the wise men of Egypt should not be slain. And the king ordered his servants to bring Joseph before him, and the king said unto them, Go to him, and do not terrify him, lest he be confused and will not know to speak properly. And the servants of the king went to Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and the king's servants shaved him, and he changed his prison garment, and he came before the king. And the king was sitting upon his royal throne, in a princely dress, girt around with a golden ephod, and the fine gold which was upon it sparkled, and the carbuncle, and the ruby, and the emerald, together with all the precious stones that were upon the king's head, dazzled the eye, and Joseph wondered greatly at the king. And the throne upon which the king sat was covered with gold and silver, and with onyx stones, and it had seventy steps. And it was their custom throughout the land of Egypt that every man who came to speak to the king, if he was a prince, or one that was estimable in the sight of the king, he ascended to the king's throne, as far as the thirty-first step, and the king would descend to the thirty-sixth step, and speak with him. If he was one of the common people, he ascended to the third step, and the king would descend to the fourth, and speak to him. And their custom was, moreover, that any man who understood to speak in all the seventy languages, he ascended the seventy steps, and went up, and spoke till he reached the king. And any man who could not complete the seventy, he ascended as many steps as the languages which he knew to speak in. And it was customary in those days in Egypt that no one should reign over them, but who understood to speak in the seventy languages. And when Joseph came before the king, he bowed down to the ground before the king, and he ascended to the third step, and the king sat upon the fourth step, and spoke with Joseph. And the king said unto Joseph, I dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter to interpret it properly. And I commanded this day that all the magicians of Egypt and the wise men thereof should come before me, and I related my dreams to them, and no one has properly interpreted them to me. And after this, 
I this day heard concerning thee, that thou art a wise man, and canst correctly interpret every dream that thou hearest. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, Let Pharaoh relate his dreams that he dreamed. Surely the interpretations belong to God. And Pharaoh related his dreams to Joseph, the dream of the kine, and the dream of the ears of corn, and the king left off speaking. And Joseph was then clothed with the Spirit of God before the king, and he knew all the things that would befall the king from that day forward, and he knew the proper interpretation of the king's dream, and he spoke before the king. And Joseph found favor in the sight of the king, and the king inclined his ears and his heart, and he heard all the words of Joseph. And Joseph said unto the king, Do not imagine that there are two dreams, for it is only one dream. For that which God has chosen to do throughout the land, he has shown to the king in his dream. And this is the proper interpretation of thy dream. The seven good kine and ears of corn are seven years, and the seven bad kine and ears of corn are also seven years. It is one dream. Behold, the seven years that are coming, there will be a great plenty throughout the land, and after that the seven years of famine will follow them, a very grievous famine, and all the plenty will be forgotten from the land, and the famine will consume the inhabitants of the land. The king dreamed one dream, and the dream was therefore repeated unto Pharaoh, because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore I will give thee counsel and deliver thy soul, and the souls of the inhabitants of the land from the evil of the famine that thou seek throughout thy kingdom for a man very discreet and wise, who knoweth all the affairs of government, and appoint him to superintend over the land of Egypt. And let the man whom thou placest over Egypt appoint officers under him, that they gather in all the food of the good years that are coming, and let them lay up corn and deposit it in thy appointed stores. And let them keep that food for the seven years of famine, that it may be found for thee and thy people and thy whole land, that thou and thy land be not cut off by the famine. Let all the inhabitants of the land also be ordered that they gather in every man the produce of his field, of all sorts of food, during the seven good years, that they place it in their stores, that it may be found for them in the days of the famine, and that they may live upon it. This is the proper interpretation of thy dream, and this is the counsel given to save thy soul and the souls of all thy subjects. And the king answered and said unto Joseph, Who saith, and who knoweth that thy words are correct? And he said unto the king, This shall be a sign for thee, respecting all my words, that they are true, and that my advice is good for thee. Behold, thy wife sitteth this day upon the stool of delivery, and she will bear thee a son, and thou wilt rejoice with him. And when thy child shall have gone forth from his mother's womb, thy firstborn son that has been born these two years back shall die, and thou wilt be comforted in the child that will be born unto thee this day. And Joseph finished speaking these words to the king, and he bowed down to the king, and he went out. And when Joseph had gone out from the king's presence, those signs which Joseph had spoken unto the king came to pass on that day. And the queen bare a son on that day, and the king heard the glad tidings about his son, and he rejoiced. And when the reporter had gone forth from the king's presence, the king's servants found the firstborn son of the king fallen dead upon the ground. And there was a great lamentation and noise in the king's house, and the king heard it, and he said, What is the noise and lamentation that I have heard in the house? And they told the king that his firstborn son had died. Then the king knew that all Joseph's words that he had spoken were correct. And the king was consoled for his son by the child that was born to him on that day as Joseph had spoken. Chapter 49 After these things, the king sent and assembled all his officers and servants, and all the princes and nobles belonging to the king, and they all came before the king. And the king said unto them, Behold, you have seen and heard all the words of this Hebrew man, and all the signs which he declared would come to pass, and not any of his words have fallen to the ground. You know that he has given a proper interpretation of the dream, and it will surely come to pass. Now, therefore take counsel, and know what you will do, and how the land will be delivered from the famine. Seek now, and see whether the light can be found, in whose heart there is wisdom and knowledge, and I will appoint him over the land. For you have heard what the Hebrew man has advised concerning this, to save the land therewith from the famine. And I know that the land will not be delivered from the famine, but with the advice of the Hebrew man, him that advised me. And they all answered the king and said, The counsel which the Hebrew has given concerning this is good. Now therefore, our lord and king, behold, the whole land is in thy hand. Do that which seemeth good in thy sight. Him whom thou choosest, and whom thou in thy wisdom knowest to be wise and capable of delivering the land with his wisdom, him shall the king appoint to be under him over the land. 
And the king said to all the officers, I have thought that since God has made known to the Hebrew man all that he has spoken, there is none so discreet and wise in the whole land as he is. If it seem good in your sight, I will place him over the land, for he will save the land with his wisdom. And all the officers answered the king and said, But surely it is written in the laws of Egypt, and it should not be violated, that no man shall reign over Egypt, nor be the second to the king, but one who has knowledge in all the languages of the sons of men. Now therefore our lord and king, behold this Hebrew man can only speak the Hebrew language, and how then can he be over us, the second under government, a man who not even knoweth our language? Now we pray thee, send for him, and let him come before thee, and prove him in all things, and do as thou see fit. And the king said, It shall be done tomorrow, and the thing that you have spoken is good. And all the officers came on that day before the king. And on that night the Lord sent one of his ministering angels, and he came into the land of Egypt unto Joseph. And the angel of the Lord stood over Joseph, and behold, Joseph was lying in the bed at night in his master's house in the dungeon, for his master had put him back into the dungeon on account of his wife. And the angel roused him from his sleep, and Joseph rose up and stood upon his legs, and behold, the angel of the Lord was standing opposite to him. And the angel of the Lord spoke with Joseph, and he taught him all the languages of man in that night, and he called his name Jehoseph. And the angel of the Lord went from him, and Joseph returned and lay upon his bed, and Joseph was astonished at the vision which he saw. And it came to pass in the morning that the king sent for all his officers and servants, and they all came and sat before the king, and the king ordered Joseph to be brought, and the king's servants went and brought Joseph before Pharaoh. And the king came forth and descended the steps of the throne, and Joseph spoke unto the king in all languages, and Joseph went up to him and spoke unto the king until he arrived before the king in the seventieth step, and he sat before the king. And the king greatly rejoiced on account of Joseph, and all the king's officers rejoiced greatly with the king when they heard all the words of Joseph. And the thing seemed good in the sight of the king and the officers to appoint Joseph to be second to the king over the whole land of Egypt. And the king spoke to Joseph, saying, Now thou didst give me counsel to appoint a wise man over the land of Egypt, in order with all his wisdom to save the land from the famine. Now therefore, since God has made all this known to thee, and all the words which thou hast spoken, there is not throughout the land a discreet and wise man like unto thee. And thy name no more shall be called Joseph, but Zaphnath Paanea shall be thy name. Thou shalt be second to me, and according to thy word shall be all the affairs of my government, and at thy word shall my people go out and come in. Also from under thy hand shall my servants and officers receive their salary, which is given to them monthly, and to thee shall all the people of the land bow down. Only in my throne will I be greater than thou. And the king took off his ring from his hand, and put it on the hand of Joseph. And the king dressed Joseph in a princely garment, and he put a golden crown upon his head, and he put a golden chain upon his neck. And the king commanded his servants, and they made him ride in the second chariot belonging to the king, that went opposite to the king's chariot. And he caused him to ride upon a great and strong horse from the king's horses, and to be conducted through the streets of the land of Egypt. And the king commanded that all those that played upon timbrels, harps, and other musical instruments should go forth with Joseph. One thousand timbrels, one thousand mechaloth, and one thousand Nabalim went after him. And five thousand men, with drawn swords, glittering in their hands, and they went marching and playing before Joseph, and twenty thousand of the great men of the king, girt with girdles of skin covered with gold, marched at the right hand of Joseph, and twenty thousand at his left, and all the women and damsels went upon the roofs or stood in the streets, playing and rejoicing at Joseph, and gazed at the appearance of Joseph and at his beauty. And the king's people went before him and behind him, perfuming the road with frankincense and with cassia, and with all sorts of fine perfume, and scattered myrrh and aloes along the road, and twenty men proclaimed these words before him throughout the land in a loud voice. Do you see this man whom the king has chosen to be his second? All the affairs of government shall be regulated by him, and he that transgresses his orders, or that does not bow down before him to the ground shall die, for he rebels against the king and his second. And when the heralds had ceased proclaiming, all the people of Egypt bowed down to the ground before Joseph and said, May the king live, also may his second live. And all the inhabitants of Egypt bowed down along the road, and when the heralds approached them, they bowed down, and they rejoiced with all sorts of timbrels, Michal and Nabal before Joseph. And Joseph upon his horse lifted up his eyes to heaven and called out and said, 
He raiseth the poor man from the dust. He lifteth up the needy from the dunghill. O Lord of hosts, happy is the man who trusteth in thee. And Joseph passed throughout the land of Egypt with Pharaoh's servants and officers, and they showed him the whole land of Egypt and all the king's treasures. And Joseph returned and came on that day before Pharaoh, and the king gave unto Joseph a possession in the land of Egypt, a possession of fields and vineyards. And the king gave unto Joseph three thousand talents of silver, and one thousand talents of gold, and onyx stones, and bdellium, and many gifts. And on the next day the king commanded all the people of Egypt to bring unto Joseph offerings and gifts, and that he that violated the command of the king should die. And they made a high place in the street of the city, and they spread out garments there, and whoever brought anything to Joseph put it into the high place. And all the people of Egypt cast something into the high place, one man a golden earring, and the other rings and earrings, and different vessels of gold and silver work, and onyx stones, and bdellium did he cast upon the high place. Every one gave something of what he possessed. And Joseph took all these, and placed them in his treasuries, and all the officers and nobles belonging to the king exalted Joseph, and they gave him many gifts, seeing that the king had chosen him to be his second. And the king sent to Potiphera, the son of Aharam, priest of On, and he took his young daughter Osnath, and gave her unto Joseph for a wife. And the damsel was very comely, a virgin, one whom man had not known, and Joseph took her for a wife. And the king said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and beside thee none shall dare to lift up his hand or his foot to regulate my people throughout the land of Egypt. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, and Joseph went out from before the king, and he became the king's second in Egypt. And the king gave Joseph a hundred servants to attend him in his house, and Joseph also sent and purchased many servants, and they remained in the house of Joseph. Joseph then built for himself a very magnificent house like unto the houses of kings before the court of the king's palace, and he made in the house a large temple, very elegant in appearance and convenient for his residence. Three years was Joseph in erecting his house. And Joseph made unto himself a very elegant throne of abundance of gold and silver, and he covered it with onyx stones and bdellium, and he made upon it the likeness of the whole land of Egypt, and the likeness of the river of Egypt that watereth the whole land of Egypt. And Joseph sat securely upon his throne in his house, and the Lord increased Joseph's wisdom. And all the inhabitants of Egypt and Pharaoh's servants and his princes loved Joseph exceedingly, for this thing was from the Lord to Joseph. And Joseph had an army that made war, going out in hosts, and troops to the number of forty thousand six hundred men, capable of bearing arms to assist the king and Joseph against the enemy, besides the king's officers and his servants and inhabitants of Egypt without number. And Joseph gave unto his mighty men and to all his host shields and javelins, and caps and coats of mail and stones for slinging. Chapter 50 At that time the children of Tarshish came against the sons of Ishmael, and made war with them, and the children of Tarshish spoiled the Ishmaelites for a long time. And the children of Ishmael were small in number in those days, and they could not prevail over the children of Tarshish, and they were sorely oppressed. And the old men of the Ishmaelites sent a record to the king of Egypt, saying, Send, I pray thee, unto thy servants, officers and hosts, to help us fight against the children of Tarshish, for we have been consuming away for a long time. And Pharaoh sent Joseph with the mighty men and host which were with him, and also his mighty men from the king's house. And they went to the land of Havilah, to the children of Ishmael, to assist them against the children of Tarshish. And the children of Ishmael fought with the children of Tarshish. And Joseph smote the Tarshishites, and he subdued all their land, and the children of Ishmael dwell therein unto this day. And when the land of Tarshish was subdued, all the Tarshishites ran away, and came on the border of their brethren the children of Javan. And Joseph with all his mighty men and host returned to Egypt, not one man of them missing. And at the revolution of the year, in the second year of Joseph's reigning over Egypt, the Lord gave great plenty throughout the land for seven years, as Joseph had spoken. For the Lord blessed all the produce of the earth in those days for seven years, and they ate and were greatly satisfied. And Joseph at that time had officers under him, and they collected all the food of the good years, and heaped corn year by year, and they placed it in the treasuries of Joseph. And at any time, when they gathered the food, Joseph commanded that they should bring the corn in the ears, and also bring it with some of the soil of the field, that it should not spoil. And Joseph did according to this year by year, and he heaped up corn like the sand of the sea for abundance, for his, his stores, stores were immense, immense, and could not be numbered for abundance. And also all the inhabitants of Egypt gathered all sorts of food in their stores in great abundance during the seven good years, but they did not do unto it as Joseph did. 
and all the food which Joseph and the Egyptians had gathered during the seven years of plenty was secured for the land and stores for the seven years of famine, for the support of the whole land. And the inhabitants of Egypt filled each man his store and his concealed place with corn to be for support during the famine. And Joseph placed all the food that he had gathered in all the cities of Egypt, and he closed all the stores and placed sentinels over them. And Joseph's wife, Osnath, the daughter of Potipharah, bare him two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and Joseph was thirty-four years old when he begat them. And the lads grew up, and they went in his ways and in his instructions. They did not deviate from the way which their father taught them, either to the right or left. And the Lord was with the lads, and they grew up, and had understanding and skill in all wisdom, and in all the affairs of government, and all the king's officers, and his great men of the inhabitants of Egypt exalted the lads, and they were brought up amongst the king's children. And the seven years of plenty that were throughout the land were at an end, and the seven years of famine came after them as Joseph had spoken, and the famine was throughout the land. And all the people of Egypt saw that the famine had commenced in the land of Egypt, opened their stores of corn for the famine prevailed over them. And they found all the food that was in their stores full of vermin and not fit to eat, and the famine prevailed throughout the land, and all the inhabitants of Egypt came and cried before Pharaoh, for the famine was heavy upon them. And they said unto Pharaoh, Give food unto thy servants, and wherefore shall we die through this hunger before thy eyes, even we and our little ones? And Pharaoh answered them, saying, And wherefore do you cry unto me? Did not Joseph command that the corn should be laid up during the seven years of plenty for the years of famine? And wherefore did you not hearken to his voice? And the people of Egypt answered the king, saying, As thy soul liveth, our Lord, thy servants have done all that Joseph ordered, for thy servants also gathered in all the produce of their fields during the seven years of plenty, and laid it in the stores unto this day. And when the famine prevailed over thy servants, we opened our stores, and behold, all our produce was filled with vermin and was not fit for food. And when the king heard all that had befallen the inhabitants of Egypt, the king was greatly afraid on account of the famine, for he was much terrified, and the king answered the people of Egypt, saying, Since all this has happened unto you, go unto Joseph, do whatever he shall say unto you, transgress not his commands. And all the people of Egypt went forth, and came unto Joseph, and said unto him, Give unto us food, and wherefore shall we die before thee through hunger? For we gathered in our produce during the seven years as thou didst command, and we put it in store, and thus has it befallen us. And when Joseph heard all the words of the people of Egypt, and what had befallen them, Joseph opened all his stores of the produce, and he sold it unto the people of Egypt. And the famine prevailed throughout the land, and the famine was in all countries, but in the land of Egypt there was produce for sale. And all the inhabitants of Egypt came unto Joseph to buy corn, for the famine prevailed over them, and all their corn was spoiled. And Joseph daily sold it to all the people of Egypt. And all the inhabitants of the land of Canaan and the Philistines, and those beyond the Jordan, and the children of the east, and all the cities of the lands far and nigh, heard that there was corn in Egypt, and they all came to Egypt to buy corn, for the famine prevailed over them. And Joseph opened the stores of corn, and placed officers over them, and they daily stood and sold it to all that came. And Joseph knew that his brethren would also come to Egypt to buy corn, for the famine prevailed throughout the earth. And Joseph commanded all his people that they should cause it to be proclaimed throughout the land of Egypt, saying, it is the pleasure of the king, and of his second, and of their great men, that any person who wishes to buy corn in Egypt shall not send his servants to Egypt to purchase, but his sons, and also any Egyptian or Canaanite who shall come from any of the stores from buying corn in Egypt, and shall go and sell it throughout the land, he shall die, for no one shall buy it but for the support of his household. And any man leading two or three beasts shall die, for a man shall only lead his own beast. And Joseph placed sentinels at the gates of Egypt, and commanded them, saying, Any person who may come to buy corn, suffer him not to enter until his name and the name of his father and the name of his father's father be written down. And whatever is written by day, send their names unto me in the evening, that I may know their names. And Joseph placed officers throughout the land of Egypt, and he commanded them to do all these things. And Joseph did all these things, and made these statutes, in order that he might know when his brethren should come to Egypt to buy corn. And Joseph's people caused it daily to be proclaimed in Egypt according to these words and statutes which Joseph had commanded. And all the inhabitants of the east and west country, and of all the earth, heard the statutes and regulations which Joseph had enacted in Egypt, and the inhabitants of the extreme parts of the earth came and they bought corn in Egypt day after day, and then went away. And all the officers of Egypt did as Joseph had commanded, 
and all that came to Egypt to buy corn, the gatekeepers would write their names and their fathers' names, and daily bring them in the evening before Joseph. Chapter 51 And Jacob afterward heard that there was corn in Egypt, and he called unto his sons to go to Egypt to buy corn, for upon them also did the famine prevail. And he called unto his sons, saying, Behold, I hear that there is corn in Egypt, and all the people of the earth go there to purchase. Now therefore, why will you show yourselves satisfied before the whole earth? Go you also down to Egypt, and buy us a little corn amongst those that come there, that we may not die. And the sons of Jacob hearkened to the voice of their father, and they rose up to go down to Egypt, in order to buy corn amongst the rest that came there. And Jacob their father commanded them, saying, When you come into the city, do not enter together in one gate, on account of the inhabitants of the land. And the sons of Jacob went forth, and they went to Egypt. And the sons of Jacob did all as their father had commanded them. And Jacob did not send Benjamin, for he said, Lest an accident might befall him on the road, like his brother. And ten of Jacob's sons went forth. And whilst the sons of Jacob were going on the road, they repented of what they had done to Joseph, and they spoke to each other, saying, We know that our brother Joseph went down to Egypt, and now we will seek him where we go, and if we find him, we will take him from his master for a ransom, and if not, by force, and we will die for him. And the sons of Jacob agreed to this thing, and strengthened themselves on account of Joseph, to deliver him from the hand of his master. And the sons of Jacob went to Egypt, and when they came near to Egypt, they separated from each other, and they came through ten gates of Egypt, and the gatekeepers wrote their names on that day, and brought them to Joseph in the evening. And Joseph read the names from the hand of the gatekeepers of the city, and he found that his brethren had entered at the ten gates of the city. And Joseph at that time commanded that it should be proclaimed throughout the land of Egypt, saying, Go forth, all ye store guards, close all the corn stores, and let only one remain open, that those who come may purchase from it. And all the officers of Joseph did so at that time, and they closed all the stores and left only one open. And Joseph gave the written names of his brethren to him that was set over the open store, and he said unto him, Whosoever shall come to thee to buy corn, ask his name, and when men of these names shall come before thee, seize them and send them, and they did so. And when the sons of Jacob came into the city, they joined together in the city to seek Joseph before they bought themselves corn. And they went to the walls of the harlots, and they sought Joseph in the walls of the harlots for three days, for they thought that Joseph would come in the walls of the harlots, for Joseph was very comely and well favored, and the sons of Jacob sought Joseph for three days, and they could not find him. And the man who was set over the open store sought for those names which Joseph had given him, and he did not find them. And he sent to Joseph, saying, These three days have passed, and those men whose names thou didst give unto me have not come. And Joseph sent servants to seek the men in all Egypt, and to bring them before Joseph. And Joseph's servants went and came into Egypt, and could not find them, and went to Goshen, and they were not there, and then went to the city of Ramses, and could not find them. And Joseph continued to send sixteen servants to seek his brothers, and they went and spread themselves in the four corners of the city. And four of the servants went into the house of the harlots, and they found the ten men there seeking their brother. And those four men took them and brought them before him, and they bowed down to him to the ground. And Joseph was sitting upon his throne in his temple, clothed with princely garments, and upon his head was a large crown of gold, and all the mighty men were sitting around him. And the sons of Jacob saw Joseph, and his figure and comeliness and dignity of countenance seemed wonderful in their eyes, and they again bowed down to him to the ground. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but they knew him not. For Joseph was very great in their eyes, therefore they knew him not. And Joseph spoke to them, saying, From whence come ye? And they all answered and said, Thy servants have come from the land of Canaan to buy corn, for the famine prevails throughout the earth. And thy servants heard that there was corn in Egypt, so they have come amongst the other comers to buy corn for their support. And Joseph answered them, saying, If you have come to purchase, as you say, why do you come through ten gates of the city? It can only be that you have come to spy through the land. And they altogether answered Joseph and said, Not so, my lord, we are right. Thy servants are not spies, but we have come to buy corn. For thy servants are all brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And our father commanded us, saying, When you come to the city, do not enter together at one gate on account of the inhabitants of the land. And Joseph again answered them and said, That is the thing which I spoke unto you. You have come to spy through the land. Therefore you all came through ten gates of the city. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. Surely every one that cometh to buy corn goeth his way, and you are already three days in the land, 
And what do you do in the walls of harlots in which you have been for these three days? Surely spies do like unto these things. And they said unto Joseph, Far be it from our Lord to speak thus, for we are twelve brothers, the sons of our father Jacob, in the land of Canaan, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham the Hebrew. And behold, the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan, and one is not, for he was lost from us, and we thought perhaps he might be in this land. So we are seeking him throughout the land, and have come even to the houses of harlots to seek him there. And Joseph said unto them, And have you then sought him throughout the earth, that there only remained Egypt for you to seek him in? And what also should your brother do in the houses of harlots, although he were in Egypt? Have you not said that you are from the sons of Isaac, the son of Abraham? And what shall the sons of Jacob do then in the houses of harlots? And they said unto him, Because we heard that the Ishmaelites stole him from us, and it was told unto us that they sold him in Egypt, and thy servant, our brother, is very comely and well favored, so we thought he would surely be in the houses of harlots. Therefore thy servants went there to seek him, and give ransom for him. And Joseph still answered them, saying, Surely you speak falsely and utter lies, to say of yourselves that you are of the sons of Abraham. As Pharaoh liveth you are spies, therefore you have come to the houses of harlots, that you may not be known. And Joseph said unto them, And now, if you find him, and his master requireth of you a great price, will you give it for him? And they said, It shall be given. And he said unto them, And if this master will not consent to part with him for a great price, what will you do unto him on his account? And they answered him, saying, if he will not give him unto us, we will slay him, and take our brother, and go away. And Joseph said unto them, That is the thing which I have spoken to you. You are spies, for you are come to slay the inhabitants of the land. For we heard that two of your brethren smote all the inhabitants of Shechem in the land of Canaan on account of your sister, and now you come to do the like in Egypt on account of your brother. Only hereby shall I know that you are true men, if you will send home one from amongst you to fetch your youngest brother from your father, and to bring him here unto me. And by doing this thing, I will know that you are right. And Joseph called to seventy of his mighty men, and he said unto them, Take these men, and bring them into the ward. And the mighty men took the ten men, they laid hold of them, and put them into the ward, and they were in the ward three days. And on the third day Joseph had brought them out of the ward, and he said unto them, Do this for yourselves, if you be true men, so that you may live. One of your brethren shall be confined in the ward whilst you go and take home the corn for your household to the land of Canaan, and fetch your youngest brother, and bring him here unto me, that I may know that you are true men when you do this thing. And Joseph went out from them, and came into the chamber, and wept a great weeping, for his pity was excited for them. And he washed his face, and returned to them again. And he took Simeon from them, and ordered him to be bound. But Simeon was not willing to be done so, for he was a very powerful man, and they could not bind him. And Joseph called unto his mighty men, and seventy valiant men came before him with drawn swords in their hands, and the sons of Jacob were terrified at them. And Joseph said unto them, Seize this man, and confine him in prison until his brethren come to him. And Joseph's valiant men hastened, and they all laid hold of Simeon to bind him. And Simeon gave a loud and terrible shriek, and the cry was heard at a distance. And all the valiant men of Joseph were terrified at the sound of the shriek, that they fell upon their faces, and they were greatly afraid and fled. And all the men that were with Joseph fled, for they were greatly afraid of their lives. And only Joseph and Manasseh his son remained there. And Manasseh the son of Joseph saw the strength of Simeon, and he was exceedingly wroth. And Manasseh the son of Joseph rose up to Simeon, and Manasseh smote Simeon a heavy blow with his fist against the back of his neck, and Simeon was stilled of his rage. And Manasseh laid hold of Simeon, and he seized him violently, and he bound him, and brought him into the house of confinement. And all the sons of Jacob were astonished at the act of the youth. And Simeon said unto his brethren, None of you must say that this is the smiting of an Egyptian, but it is the smiting of the house of my father. And after this, Joseph ordered him to be called who was set over the storehouse, to fill their sacks with corn as much as they could carry, and to restore every man's money into his sack, and to give them provision for the road, and thus did he unto them. And Joseph commanded them, saying, Take heed, lest you transgress my orders to bring your brother as I have told you. And it shall be when you bring your brother hither unto me, then will I know that you are true men, and you shall traffic in the land, and I will restore unto you your brother, and you shall return in peace to your father. And they all answered and said, According as our Lord speaketh, so will we do. And they bowed down to him to the ground. And every man lifted his corn upon his ass, and they went out to go to the land of Canaan to their father. And they came to the inn, and Levi spread his sack to give provender to his ass, when he saw and behold his money in full weight was still in his sack. And the man was greatly afraid, and he said unto his brethren, 
My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And the men were greatly afraid, and they said, What is this that God hath done unto us? And they all said, And where is the Lord's kindness with our fathers, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that the Lord has this day delivered us into the hands of the king of Egypt to contrive against us? And Judah said unto them, Surely we are guilty sinners before the Lord our God, and having sold our brother, our own flesh, and wherefore do you say, Where is the Lord's kindness with our fathers? And Reuben said unto them, Said I not unto you, Do not sin against the lad, and you would not listen to me? Now God requireth him from us, and how dare you say, Where is the Lord's kindness with our fathers, whilst you have sinned unto the Lord? And they tarried overnight in that place, and they rose up early in the morning, and laded their asses with their corn, and they led them, and went on, and came to their father's house in the land of Canaan. And Jacob and his household went out to meet his sons, and Jacob saw, and behold, their brother Simeon was not with them. And Jacob said unto his sons, Where is your brother Simeon, whom I do not see? And his sons told him all that had befallen them in Egypt. Chapter 52 And they entered their house, and every man opened his sack, and they saw, and behold, every man's bundle of money was there, at which they and their father were greatly terrified. And Jacob said unto them, What is this that you have done to me? I sent your brother Joseph to inquire after your welfare, and you said unto me, A wild beast did devour him. And Simeon went with you to buy food, and you say the king of Egypt hath confined him in prison, and you wish to take Benjamin to cause his death also, and bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave on account of Benjamin and his brother Joseph. Now therefore my son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone, and mischief may befall him by the way in which you go, as it befell his brother. And Reuben said unto his father, Thou shalt slay my two sons, if I do not bring thy son and place him before thee. And Jacob said unto his sons, Abide ye here, and do not go down to Egypt, for my son shall not go down with you to Egypt, nor die like his brother. And Judah said unto them, Refrain ye from him until the corn is finished, and he will then say, Take down your brother, when he will find his own life and the life of his household in danger from the famine. And in those days the famine was sore throughout the land, and all the people of the earth went and came to Egypt to buy food, for the famine prevailed greatly amongst them. And the sons of Jacob remained in Canaan a year and two months until their corn was finished. And it came to pass, after their corn was finished, the whole household of Jacob was pinched with hunger. And all the infants of the sons of Jacob came together, and they approached Jacob, and they all surrounded him, and they said unto him, Give unto us bread, and wherefore shall we all perish through hunger in thy presence? Jacob heard the words of his son's children, and he wept a great weeping, and his pity was roused for them. And Jacob called unto his sons, and they all came and sat before him. And Jacob said unto them, And have you not seen how your children have been weeping over me this day, saying, Give unto us bread, and there is none? Now therefore, return and buy for us a little food. And Judah answered and said unto his father, If thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy corn for thee. And if thou wilt not send him, then we will not go down. For surely the king of Egypt particularly enjoined us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother be with you. For the king of Egypt is a strong and mighty king. And behold, if we shall go to him without our brother, we shall all be put to death. Dost thou not know, and hast thou not heard that this king is very powerful and wise, and there is not like unto him in all the earth? Behold, we have seen all the things of the earth, and we have not seen one like that king, the king of Egypt. Surely amongst all the kings of the earth there is none greater than Abimelech, king of the Philistines. Yet the king of Egypt is greater and mightier than he, and Abimelech can only be compared to one of his officers. Father, thou hast not seen his palace and his throne, and all his servants standing before him. Thou hast not seen that king upon his throne, in his pomp and royal appearance, dressed in his kingly robes, with a large golden crown upon his head. Thou hast not seen the honor and glory which God has given unto him, for there is not like unto him in all the earth. Father, thou hast not seen the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge which God has given in his heart, nor heard his sweet voice when he spake unto us. We know not, Father, who made him acquainted with our names, and all that befell us, Yet he asked also after thee, saying, Is your father still living, and is it well with him? Thou hast not seen the affairs of the government of Egypt regulated by him, without inquiring of Pharaoh his lord. Thou hast not seen the awe and fear which he impressed upon all the Egyptians. And also when we went from him, we threatened to do unto Egypt 
like unto the rest of the cities of the Amorites. And we were exceedingly wroth against all his words, which he spoke concerning us as spies. And now when we shall again come before him, his terror will fall upon us all, and not one of us will be able to speak to him either a little or a great thing. Now therefore, Father, send, we pray thee, the lad with us, and we will go down and buy thee food for our support, and not die through hunger. And Jacob said, Why have you dealt so ill with me to tell the king you had a brother? What is this thing you have done unto me? And Judah said unto Jacob his father, Give the lad into my care, and we will rise up and go down to Egypt and buy corn, and then return, and it shall be when we return if the lad be not with us, then let me bear thy blame forever. Hast thou not seen all our infants weeping over thee through hunger, and there is no power in thy hand to satisfy them? Now let thy pity be roused for them, and send our brother with us, and we will go. For how will the Lord's kindness to our ancestors be manifested to thee, when thou sayest that the king of Egypt will take away thy son? As the Lord liveth, I will not leave him until I bring him, and place him before thee. But pray for us unto the Lord, that he may deal kindly with us, to cause us to be received favorably and kindly before the king of Egypt and his men. For had we not delayed, surely now we had returned a second time with thy son. And Jacob said unto his sons, I trust in the Lord God, that he may deliver you, and give you favor in the sight of the king of Egypt, and in the sight of all his men. Now therefore rise up, and go to the man, and take for him in your hands a present from what can be obtained in the land, and bring it before him. And may the Almighty God give you mercy before him, that he may send Benjamin and Simeon your brethren with you. And all the men rose up, and they took their brother Benjamin, and they took in their hands a large present of the best of the land, and they also took a double portion of silver. And Jacob strictly commanded his sons concerning Benjamin, saying, Take heed of him in the way in which you are going, and do not separate yourselves from him in the road, neither in Egypt. And Jacob rose up from his sons, and spread forth his hands, and he prayed unto the Lord on account of his sons, saying, O Lord God of heaven and earth, Remember thy covenant with our father Abraham, remember it with my father Isaac, and deal kindly with my sons, and deliver them not into the hands of the king of Egypt. Do it, I pray thee, O God, for the sake of thy mercies, and redeem all my children, and rescue them from Egyptian power, and send them their two brothers. And all the wives of the sons of Jacob and their children lifted up their eyes to heaven, and they all wept before the Lord, and cried unto him to deliver their fathers from the hand of the king of Egypt. And Jacob wrote a record to the king of Egypt, and gave it into the hand of Judah, and into the hand of his sons, for the king of Egypt, saying, From thy servant Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham the Hebrew, the prince of God, to the powerful and wise king, the revealer of secrets, king of Egypt, greeting. Be it known to my lord the king of Egypt, the famine was sore upon us in the land of Canaan, and I sent my sons to thee, to buy us a little food from thee for our support. For my sons surrounded me, and I, being very old, cannot see with my eyes, for my eyes have become very heavy through age, as well as with daily weeping for my son, for Joseph, who was lost from before me. And I commanded my sons that they should not enter the gates of the city when they came to Egypt on account of the inhabitants of the land. And I also commanded them to go about Egypt to seek for my son Joseph, perhaps they might find him there, and they did so, and thou didst consider them as spies of the land. Have we not heard concerning thee that thou didst interpret Pharaoh's dream, and didst speak truly unto him? How then dost thou not know in thy wisdom whether my sons are spies or not? Now therefore, my lord and king, behold, I have sent my son before thee, as thou didst speak unto my sons. I beseech thee to put thy eyes upon him, until he is returned to me in peace with his brethren. For dost thou not know, or hast thou not heard that which our God did unto Pharaoh when he took my mother Sarah? and what he did unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, on account of her, and also what our father Abraham did unto the nine kings of Elam, how he smote them all with a few men that were with him, and also what my two sons Simeon and Levi did unto the eight cities of the Amorites, how they destroyed them on account of their sister Dina, and also on account of their brother Benjamin, they consoled themselves for the loss of his brother Joseph. What will they then do for him, when they see the hand of any people prevailing over them for his sake? Dost thou not know, O king of Egypt, that the power of God is with us, and that also God ever heareth our prayers, and forsaketh us not all the days? And when my sons told me of thy dealings with them, I called not unto the Lord on account of thee, for then thou wouldest have perished with thy men before my son Benjamin came before thee. But I thought that as Simeon my son was in thy house, perhaps thou mightest deal kindly with him, therefore I did not this thing unto thee. 
Now therefore, behold, Benjamin, my son, cometh unto thee with my sons. Take heed of him, and put thy eyes upon him, and then will God place his eyes over thee, and throughout thy kingdom. Now I have told thee all that is in my heart, and behold, my sons are coming to thee, with their brother. Examine the face of the whole earth for their sake, and send them back in peace with their brethren. And Jacob gave the record to his sons, into the care of Judah, to give it unto the king of Egypt. Chapter 53 And the sons of Jacob rose up, and took Benjamin, and the whole of the presence. And they went and came to Egypt, and they stood before Joseph. And Joseph beheld his brother Benjamin with them, and he saluted them. And these men came to Joseph's house. And Joseph commanded the superintendent of his house to give to his brethren to eat, and he did so unto them. And at noontime, Joseph sent for the men to come before him with Benjamin. And the men told the superintendent of Joseph's house concerning the silver that was returned in their sacks, and he said unto them, It will be well with you, fear not. And he brought their brother Simeon unto them. And Simeon said unto his brethren, The Lord of the Egyptians has acted very kindly unto me. He did not keep me bound as you saw with your eyes, for when you went out from the city, he let me free and dealt kindly with me in his house. And Judah took Benjamin by the hand, and they came before Joseph, and they bowed down to him to the ground. And the men gave the present unto Joseph, and they all sat before him, and Joseph said unto them, Is it well with you? Is it well with your children? Is it well with your aged father? And they said, It is well. And Judah took the record which Jacob had sent, and gave it into the hand of Joseph. And Joseph read the letter, and knew his father's writing, and he wished to weep, and he went into an inner room, and he wept a great weeping, and he went out. And he lifted up his eyes, and beheld his brother Benjamin, and he said, Is this your brother of whom you spoke unto me? And Benjamin approached Joseph, and Joseph placed his hand upon his head, and he said unto him, May God be gracious unto thee, my son. And when Joseph saw his brother, the son of his mother, he again wished to weep, and he entered the chamber, and he wept there, and he washed his face, and went out, and refrained from weeping, and he said, Prepare food. And Joseph had a cup from which he drank, and it was of silver, beautifully inlaid with onyx stones and bdellium. And Joseph struck the cup in the sight of his brethren, whilst they were sitting to eat with him. And Joseph said unto the men, I know by this cup that Reuben the firstborn, Simeon and Levi and Judah, Issachar and Zebulun, are children from one mother. Seat yourselves to eat according to your births. And he also placed the others according to their births, and he said, I know that this your youngest brother has no brother, and I, like him, have no brother. He shall therefore sit down to eat with me. And Benjamin went up before Joseph, and sat upon the throne, and the men beheld the acts of Joseph, and they were astonished at them. And the men ate and drank at that time with Joseph, and he then gave presents unto them. And Joseph gave one gift unto Benjamin, and Manasseh and Ephraim saw the acts of their father, and they also gave presents unto him. And Osnath gave him one present, and they were five presents in the hand of Benjamin. And Joseph brought them out wine to drink, and they would not drink, and they said, From the day on which Joseph was lost, we have not drunk wine, nor eaten delicacies. And Joseph swore unto them, and he pressed them hard, and they drank plentifully with him on that day. And Joseph afterward turned to his brother Benjamin to speak with him. And Benjamin was still sitting upon the throne before Joseph. And Joseph said unto him, Hast thou begotten any children? And he said, Thy servant has ten sons, and these are their names, Bela, Besher, Ashbal, Gira, Naaman, Achai, Rosh, Mupim, Chupim, and Ord. And I called their names after my brother who I have not seen. And he ordered them to bring before him his map of the stars, whereby Joseph knew all the times. And Joseph said unto Benjamin, I have heard that the Hebrews are acquainted with all wisdom. Dost thou know anything of this? And Benjamin said, Thy servant is knowing also in all the wisdom which my father taught me. And Joseph said unto Benjamin, Look now at this instrument, and understand where thy brother Joseph is in Egypt, who you said went down to Egypt. And Benjamin beheld that instrument with the map of the stars of heaven, and he was wise, and looked therein to know where his brother was. And Benjamin divided the whole land of Egypt into four divisions, and he found that he who was sitting upon the throne before him was his brother Joseph. And Benjamin wondered greatly. And when Joseph saw that his brother Benjamin was so much astonished, he said unto Benjamin, What hast thou seen, and why art thou astonished? And Benjamin said unto Joseph, I can see by this that Joseph my brother sitteth here with me upon the throne, 
And Joseph said unto him, I am Joseph thy brother. Reveal not this thing unto thy brethren. Behold, I will send thee with them when they go away, and I will command them to be brought back again into the city, and I will take thee away from them. And if they dare their lives and fight for thee, then I shall know that they have repented of what they did unto me, and I will make myself known to them. And if they forsake thee when I take thee, then thou shalt remain with me, and I will wrangle with them, and they shall go away, and I will not become known to them. At that time, Joseph commanded his officer to fill their sacks with food, and to put each man's money into his sack, and to put the cup in the sack of Benjamin, and to give them provision for the road, and they did so unto them. And on the next day, the men rose up early in the morning, and they loaded their asses with their corn, and they went forth with Benjamin, and they went to the land of Canaan with their brother Benjamin. They had not gone far from Egypt when Joseph commanded him that was set over his house, saying, Rise, pursue these men before they get too far from Egypt, and say unto them, Why have you stolen my master's cup? And Joseph's officer rose up, and he reached them, and he spoke unto them all the words of Joseph. And when they heard this thing, they became exceedingly wroth, and they said, He with whom thy master's cup shall be found shall die, and we will also become slaves. And they hastened, and each man brought down his sack from his ass. And they looked in their bags, and the cup was found in Benjamin's bag. And they all tore their garments, and they returned to the city. And they smote Benjamin in the road, continually smiting him until he came into the city. And they stood before Joseph. And Judah's anger was kindled, and he said, This man has only brought me back to destroy Egypt this day. And the men came to Joseph's house. And they found Joseph sitting upon his throne, and all the mighty men standing at his right and left. And Joseph said unto them, What is this act that you have done, that you took away my silver cup and went away? But I know that you took my cup in order to know thereby in what part of the land your brother was. And Judah said, What shall we say to our Lord? What shall we speak, and how shall we justify ourselves? God has this day found the iniquity of all thy servants. Therefore has he done this thing to us this day. And Joseph rose up, and caught hold of Benjamin, and took him from his brethren with violence. And he came to the house, and locked the door at them. And Joseph commanded him that was set over his house, that he should say unto them, Thus saith the king, Go in peace to your father. Behold, I have taken the man in whose hand my cup was found. Chapter 54 And when Judah saw the dealings of Joseph with them, Judah approached him, and broke open the door, and came with his brethren before Joseph. And Judah said unto Joseph, Let it not seem grievous in the sight of my Lord. May thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word before thee. And Joseph said unto him, Speak. And Judah spoke before Joseph, and his brethren were there standing before them. And Judah said unto Joseph, Surely when we first came to our Lord to buy food, thou didst consider us as spies of the land, and we brought Benjamin before thee, and thou still makest sport of us this day. Now therefore, let the king hear my words, and send, I pray thee, our brother, that he may go along with us to our father, lest thy soul perish this day with all the souls of the inhabitants of Egypt. Dost thou not know what two of my brethren, Simeon and Levi, did unto the city of Shechem, and unto seven cities of the Amorites, on account of our sister Dina, and also what they would do for the sake of their brother Benjamin? And I with my strength, who am greater and mightier than both of them, come this day upon thee and thy land, if thou art unwilling to send our brother." Hast thou not heard what our God who made choice of us did unto Pharaoh on account of Sarah our mother, whom he took away from our father, that he smote him and his household with heavy plagues, that even unto this day the Egyptians relate this wonder to each other? So will our God do unto thee on account of Benjamin whom thou hast this day taken from his father, and on account of the evils which thou this day heapest over us in thy land. For our God will remember his covenant with our father Abraham, and bring evil upon thee, because thou hast grieved the soul of our father this day. Now therefore, hear my words that I have this day spoken unto thee, and send our brother that he may go away, lest thou and the people of thy land die by the sword, for you cannot all prevail over me. And Joseph answered Judah, saying, Why hast thou opened wide thy mouth? And why dost thou boast over us, saying, Strength is with thee? As Pharaoh liveth, if I command all my valiant men to fight with you, surely thou and these thy brethren would sink in the mire. And Judah said unto Joseph, Surely it becometh thee and thy people to fear me, as the Lord liveth. If I once draw my sword, I shall not sheath it again, until I shall this day have slain all Egypt, and I will commence with thee and finish with Pharaoh thy master. And Joseph answered and said unto him, Surely strength, 
belongeth not alone to thee. I am stronger and mightier than thou. Surely if thou drawest thy sword, I will put it to thy neck and to the necks of all thy brethren. And Judah said unto him, Surely if I this day open my mouth against thee, I would swallow thee up, that thou be destroyed from off the earth, and perish this day from thy kingdom. And Joseph said, Surely if thou openest thy mouth, I have power and might to close thy mouth with a stone, until thou shalt not be able to utter a word. See how many stones are before us. Truly I can take a stone, and force it into thy mouth, and break thy jaws. And Judah said, God is witness between us, that we have not hitherto desired to battle with thee. Only give us our brother, and we will go from thee. And Joseph answered and said, As Pharaoh liveth, if all the kings of Canaan came together with you, you should not take him from my hand. Now therefore, go your way to your father, and your brother shall be unto me for a slave, for he has robbed the king's house. And Judah said, What is it to thee, or to the character of the king? Surely the king sendeth forth from his house, throughout the land, silver and gold, either in gifts or expenses. And thou still talkest about thy cup which thou didst place in our brother's bag, and sayst that he has stolen it from thee? God forbid that our brother Benjamin, or any of the seed of Abraham, should do this thing to steal from thee, or from anyone else, whether king, prince, or any man. Now therefore, cease this accusation, lest the whole earth hear thy words, saying, For a little silver the king of Egypt wrangled with the men, and he accused them and took their brother for a slave. And Joseph answered and said, Take unto you this cup, and go from me, and leave your brother for a slave, for it is the judgment of a thief to be a slave. And Judah said, Why art thou not ashamed of thy words, to leave thy brother, and to take thy cup? Surely if thou givest us thy cup, or a thousand times as much, we will not leave our brother, for the silver which is found in the hand of any man, that we will not die over him. And Joseph answered, And why did you forsake your brother, and sell him for twenty pieces of silver unto this day? And why then will you not do the same to this your brother? And Judah said, The Lord is witness between me and thee that we desire not thy battles. Now therefore give us our brother, and we will go from thee without quarreling. And Joseph answered and said, If all the kings of the land should assemble, they will not be able to take your brother from my hand. And Judah said, What shall we say unto our father, when he seeth that our brother cometh not with us, and will grieve over him? And Joseph answered and said, This is the thing which you shall tell unto your father, saying, The rope has gone after the bucket. And Judah said, Surely thou art a king, and why speakest thou these things, giving a false judgment? Woe unto the king who is like unto thee. And Joseph answered and said, There is no false judgment in the word that I spoke on account of your brother Joseph, for all of you sold him to the Midianites for twenty pieces of silver, and you all denied it to your father and said unto him, An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph has been torn to pieces. And Judah said, Behold, the fire of Shem burneth in my heart. Now I will burn all your land with fire. And Joseph answered and said, Surely thy sister-in-law Tamar, who killed your sons, extinguished the fire of Shechem. And Judah said, If I pluck out a single hair from my flesh, I will fill all Egypt with its blood. And Joseph answered and said, Such is your custom to do as you did to your brother whom you sold, and you dipped his coat in blood and brought it to your father in order that he might say an evil beast devoured him, and here is his blood. And when Judah heard this thing, he was exceedingly wroth, and his anger burned within him, and there was before him in that place a stone the weight of which was about four hundred shekels, and Judah's anger was kindled, and he took the stone in one hand, and cast it to the heavens, and caught it with his left hand. And he placed it afterward under his legs, and he sat upon it with all his strength, and the stone was turned into dust from the force of Judah. And Joseph saw the act of Judah, and he was very much afraid, but he commanded Manasseh his son, and he also did with another stone like unto the act of Judah. And Judah said unto his brethren, Let not any of you say this man is an Egyptian, but by his doing this thing he is of our father's family. And Joseph said, not to you only is strength given, for we are also powerful men, and why will you boast over us all? And Judah said unto Joseph, Send, I pray thee, our brother, and ruin not thy country this day. And Joseph answered and said unto them, Go and tell your father, an evil beast hath devoured him, as you said, concerning your brother Joseph. And Judah spoke to his brother Naphtali, and he said unto him, Make haste, go now, and number all the streets of Egypt, and come and tell me. And Simeon said unto him, let not this thing be a trouble to thee. Now I will go to the mount, and take up one large stone from the mount, and level it at every one in Egypt, and kill all that are in it. 
And Joseph heard all these words that his brethren spoke before him, and he did not know that Joseph understood them, for they imagined that he knew not to speak Hebrew. And Joseph was greatly afraid of the words of his brethren, lest they should destroy Egypt, and he commanded his son Manasseh, saying, Go now and make haste, and gather unto me all the inhabitants of Egypt, and all the valiant men together, and let them come to me now upon horseback, and on foot, and with all sorts of musical instruments. And Manasseh went and did so. And Naphtali went as Judah had commanded him, for Naphtali was light-footed as one of the swift stags, and he would go upon the ears of corn, and they would not break under him. And he went and numbered all the streets of Egypt, and he found them to be twelve, and he came hastily and told Judah. And Judah said unto his brethren, Hasten you, and put on every man his sword upon his loins, and we will come over Egypt, and smite them all, and let not a remnant remain. And Judah said, Behold, I will destroy three of the streets with my strength, and you shall each destroy one street. And when Judah was speaking this thing, behold, the inhabitants of Egypt and all the mighty men came toward them with all sorts of musical instruments and with loud shouting. And their number was five hundred cavalry and ten thousand infantry and four hundred men who could fight without sword or spear, only with their hands had strength. And all the mighty men came with great storming and shouting, and they all surrounded the sons of Jacob and terrified them, and the ground quaked at the sound of their shouting. And when the sons of Jacob saw these troops, they were greatly afraid of their lives, and Joseph did so in order to terrify the sons of Jacob to become tranquilized. And Judah, seeing some of his brethren terrified, said unto them, Why are you afraid whilst the grace of God is with us? And when Judah saw all the people of Egypt surrounding them at the command of Joseph to terrify them, only Joseph commanded them, saying, Do not touch any of them. Then Judah hastened and drew his sword, and uttered a loud and bitter scream, and he smote with his sword, and he sprang upon the ground, and he still continued to shout against all the people. And when he did this thing, the Lord caused the terror of Judah and his brethren to fall upon the valiant men and all the people that surrounded them. And they all fled at the sound of the shouting, and they were terrified, and fell one upon the other, and many of them died as they fell, and they all fled from before Judah and his brethren, and from before Joseph. And whilst they were fleeing, Judah and his brethren pursued them unto the house of Pharaoh, and they all escaped, and Judah again sat before Joseph, and roared at him like a lion, and gave a great and tremendous shriek at him. And the shriek was heard at a distance, and all the inhabitants of Succoth heard it, and all Egypt quaked at the sound of the shriek, and also the walls of Egypt and the land of Goshen fell in from the shaking of the earth, and Pharaoh also fell from his throne upon the ground, and also all the pregnant women of Egypt and Goshen miscarried when they heard the noise of the shaking, for they were terribly afraid. And Pharaoh sent word, saying, What is this thing that has this day happened in the land of Egypt? And they came and told him all the things from beginning to end, and Pharaoh was alarmed, and he wondered, and was greatly afraid. And his fright increased when he heard all these things, and he sent unto Joseph, saying, Thou hast brought unto me the Hebrews to destroy all Egypt. What wilt thou do with that thievish slave? Send him away, and let him go with his brethren, and let us not perish through their evil, even we, you and all Egypt. And if thou desirest not to do this thing, cast off from thee all my valuable things, and go with them to their land, if thou delightest in it. For they will this day destroy my whole country, and slay all my people. Even all the women of Egypt have miscarried through their screams. See what they have done merely by their shouting and speaking. Moreover, if they fight with the sword, they will destroy the land. Now therefore, choose that which thou desirest, whether me or the Hebrews, whether Egypt or the land of the Hebrews. And they came and told Joseph all the words of Pharaoh that he had said concerning him. And Joseph was greatly afraid at the words of Pharaoh. And Judah and his brethren were still standing before Joseph, indignant and enraged. And all the sons of Jacob roared at Joseph, like the roaring of the sea and its waves. And Joseph was greatly afraid of his brethren, and on account of Pharaoh. And Joseph sought a pretext to make himself known unto his brethren, lest they should destroy all Egypt. And Joseph commanded his son Manasseh, and Manasseh went and approached Judah, and placed his hand upon his shoulder, and the anger of Judah was stilled. And Judah said unto his brethren, Let no one of you say that this is the act of an Egyptian youth, for this is the work of my father's house. And Joseph, seeing and knowing that Judah's anger was stilled, he approached to speak unto Judah in the language of mildness. And Joseph said unto Judah, Surely you speak truth, and have this day verified your assertions concerning your strength. And may your God, who delighteth in you, increase your welfare. But tell me truly, why from amongst all thy brethren dost thou wrangle with me on account of the lad, as none of them have spoken one word to me concerning him? And Judah answered Joseph, saying, Surely thou must know that I was security for the lad to his father, saying, 
if I brought him not unto him, I should bear his blame forever. Therefore have I approached thee from amongst all my brethren, for I saw that thou wast unwilling to suffer him to go from thee. Now therefore may I find grace in thy sight, that thou shalt send him to go with us, and behold I will remain as a substitute for him, to serve thee in whatever thou desirest. For wheresoever thou shalt send me, I will go to serve thee with great energy. Send me now to a mighty king who has rebelled against thee, and thou shalt know what I will do unto him and unto his land. Although he may have cavalry and infantry, or an exceeding mighty people, I will slay them all, and bring the king's head before thee. Dost thou not know, or hast thou not heard that our father Abraham, with his servant Eleazar, smote all the kings of Elam with their hosts in one night? They left not one remaining? And ever since that day, our father's strength was given unto us for an inheritance, for us and our seed forever. And Joseph answered and said, You speak truth, and falsehood is not in your mouth. For it was also told unto us that the Hebrews have power, and that the Lord their God delighteth much in them, and who then can stand before them? However, on this condition will I send your brother, if you will bring before me his brother, the son of his mother, of whom you said that he had gone from you down to Egypt, and it shall come to pass, when you bring unto me his brother, I will take him in his stead, because not one of you was security for him to your father, and when he shall come unto me, I will then send you with his brother, for whom you have been security. And Judah's anger was kindled against Joseph when he spoke this thing, and his eyes dropped blood with anger, and he said unto his brethren, How doth this man this day seek his own destruction, and that of all Egypt? And Simeon answered Joseph, saying, Did we not tell thee at first that we knew not the particular spot to which he went, and whether he be dead or alive? And wherefore speaketh my Lord like unto these things? And Joseph, observing the countenance of Judah, discerned that his anger began to kindle when he spoke unto him, saying, Bring unto me your other brother instead of this brother. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Surely you said that your brother was either dead or lost. Now if I should call him this day, and he should come before you, would you give him unto me instead of his brother? And Joseph began to speak and call out, Joseph, Joseph, come this day before me, and appear to thy brethren, and sit before them. And when Joseph spoke this thing before them, they looked each a different way to see from whence Joseph would come before them. And Joseph observed all their acts, and said unto them, Why do you look here and there? I am Joseph whom you sold to Egypt. Now therefore, let it not grieve you that you sold me, for as a support during the famine did God send me before you. And his brethren were terrified at him when they heard the words of Joseph, and Judah was exceedingly terrified at him. And when Benjamin heard the words of Joseph, he was before them in the inner part of the house. And Benjamin ran unto Joseph his brother, and embraced him, and fell upon his neck, and they wept. And when Joseph's brethren saw that Benjamin had fallen upon his brother's neck, and wept with him, they also fell upon Joseph, and embraced him, and they wept a great weeping with Joseph. And the voice was heard in the house of Joseph, that they were Joseph's brethren, and it pleased Pharaoh exceedingly, for he was afraid of them, lest they should destroy Egypt. And Pharaoh sent his servants unto Joseph to congratulate him concerning his brethren who had come to him. And all the captains of the armies and troops that were in Egypt came to rejoice with Joseph, and all Egypt rejoiced greatly about Joseph's brethren. And Pharaoh sent his servants to Joseph, saying, Tell thy brethren to fetch all belonging to them, and let them come unto me, and I will place them in the best part of the land of Egypt. And they did so. And Joseph commanded him that was set over his house to bring out his brethren gifts and garments. And he brought out to them many garments, being robes of royalty, and many gifts. And Joseph divided them amongst his brethren. And he gave unto each of his brethren a change of garments of gold and silver, and three hundred pieces of silver. And Joseph commanded them all to be dressed in these garments, and to be brought before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, seeing that all Joseph's brethren were valiant men, and of beautiful appearance, he greatly rejoiced. And they afterward went out from the presence of Pharaoh to go to the land of Canaan, to their father. And their brother Benjamin was with them. And Joseph rose up, and gave unto them eleven chariots from Pharaoh. And Joseph gave unto them his chariot, upon which he rode on the day of his being crowned in Egypt, to fetch his father to Egypt. And Joseph sent to all his brothers children, garments, according to their numbers, and a hundred pieces of silver to each of them. And he also sent garments to the wives of his brethren, from the garments of the king's wives, and he sent them. And he gave unto each of his brethren ten men to go with them to the land of Canaan, to serve them, to serve their children, and all belonging to them, and coming to Egypt. And Joseph sent by the hand of his brother Benjamin ten suits of garments for his ten sons, a portion above the rest of the children of the sons of Jacob. And he sent to each fifty pieces of silver, and ten chariots on account of Pharaoh, 
and he sent to his father ten asses laden with all the luxuries of Egypt, and ten she-asses laden with corn and bread and nourishment for his father, and to all that were with him as provisions for the road. And he sent to his sister Dina garments of silver and gold and frankincense and myrrh and aloes and women's ornaments in great plenty, and he sent the same from the wives of Pharaoh to the wives of Benjamin. And he gave unto all his brethren, also to their wives, all sorts of onyx stones and bdellium, and from all the valuable things amongst the great people of Egypt. Nothing of all the costly things was left but what Joseph sent to his father's household. And he sent his brethren away, and they went, and he sent his brother Benjamin with them. And Joseph went out with them to accompany them on the road unto the borders of Egypt, and he commanded them concerning his father and his household to come to Egypt. And he said unto them, Do not quarrel on the road, for this thing was from the Lord to keep a great people from starvation, for there will be yet five years of famine in the land. And he commanded them, saying, When you come unto the land of Canaan, do not come suddenly before my father in this affair, but act in your wisdom. And Joseph ceased to command them, and he turned and went back to Egypt. And the sons of Jacob went to the land of Canaan, with joy and cheerfulness, to their father Jacob. And they came unto the borders of the land, and they said to each other, What shall we do in this matter before our father? For if we come suddenly to him, and tell him the matter, he will be greatly alarmed at our words, and will not believe us. And they went along until they came nigh into their houses, and they found Sirach, the daughter of Asher, going forth to meet them. And the damsel was very good and subtle, and knew how to play upon the harp. And they called unto her, and she came before them, and she kissed them. And they took her, and gave unto her a harp, saying, Go now before our father, and sit before him, and strike upon the harp, and speak these words. And they commanded her to go to their house, and she took the harp and hastened before them, and she came and sat near Jacob. And she played well and sang, and uttered in the sweetness of her words, Joseph my uncle is living, and he ruleth throughout the land of Egypt, and is not dead. And she continued to repeat and utter these words, and Jacob heard her words, and they were agreeable to him. He listened whilst she repeated them twice and thrice, and joy entered the heart of Jacob at the sweetness of her words, and the Spirit of God was upon him, and he knew all her words to be true. And Jacob blessed Sirach when she spoke these words before him, and he said unto her, My daughter, may death never prevail over thee, for thou hast revived my spirit. Only speak yet before me as thou hast spoken, for thou hast gladdened me with all thy words. And she continued to sing these words, and Jacob listened, and it pleased him, and he rejoiced, and the Spirit of God was upon him. Whilst he was yet speaking with her, behold, his sons came to him with horses and chariots and royal garments and servants running before them. And Jacob rose up to meet them, and saw his sons dressed in royal garments, and he saw all the treasures that Joseph had sent to them. And they said unto him, Be informed that our brother Joseph is living, and it is he who ruleth throughout the land of Egypt, and it is he who spoke unto us as we told thee. And Jacob heard all the words of his sons, and his heart palpitated at their words, for he could not believe them until he saw all that Joseph had given them, and what he had sent them, and all the signs which Joseph had spoken unto them. And they opened out before him, and showed him all that Joseph had sent. They gave unto each what Joseph had sent him, and he knew that they had spoken the truth, and he rejoiced exceedingly on account of his son. And Jacob said, It is enough for me that my son Joseph is still living. I will go and see him before I die. And his sons told him all that had befallen them, and Jacob said, I will go down to Egypt to see my son and his offspring. And Jacob rose up and put on the garments which Joseph had sent him, and after he had washed and shaved his hair, he put on his head the turban which Joseph had sent him. And all the people of Jacob's house and their wives put on the garments which Joseph had sent to them, and they greatly rejoiced at Joseph that he was still living and that he was ruling in Egypt. And all the inhabitants of Canaan heard of this thing, and they came and rejoiced much with Jacob that he was still living. And Jacob made a feast for them for three days, and all the kings of Canaan and nobles of the land ate and drank and rejoiced in the house of Jacob. Chapter 55 And it came to pass after this that Jacob said, I will go and see my son in Egypt, and will then come back to the land of Canaan, of which God had spoken unto Abraham, for I cannot leave the land of my birthplace. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Go down to Egypt with all thy household, and remain there. Fear not, go down to Egypt, for I will be there to make thee a great nation. And Jacob said within himself, I will go and see my son, whether the fear of his God is yet in his heart, amidst all the inhabitants of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Fear not about Joseph, 
for he still retaineth his integrity to serve me, as will seem good in thy sight. And Jacob rejoiced exceedingly concerning his son. At that time Jacob commanded his sons and household to go to Egypt, according to the word of the Lord unto him. And Jacob rose up with his sons and all his household. And he went out from the land of Canaan, from Beersheba, with joy and gladness of heart, and they went to the land of Egypt. And it came to pass, when they came near Egypt, Jacob sent Judah before him to Joseph, that he might show him a situation in Egypt. And Judah did according to the word of his father. And he hastened, and ran, and came to Joseph. And they assigned for them a place in the land of Goshen, for all his household. And Judah returned, and came along the road to his father. And Joseph harnessed the chariot, and he assembled all his mighty men, and his servants, and all the officers of Egypt, in order to go and meet his father Jacob. And Joseph's mandate was proclaimed in Egypt, saying, All that do not go to meet Jacob shall die. And on the next day Joseph went forth with all Egypt, a great and mighty host, all dressed in garments of fine linen and purple, and with instruments of silver and gold, and with their instruments of war with them. And they all went to meet Jacob with all sorts of musical instruments, with drums and timbrels, strewing myrrh and aloes all along the road. And they all went after this fashion, and the earth shook at their shouting. And all the women of Egypt went upon the roofs of Egypt, and upon the walls to meet Jacob. And upon the head of Joseph was Pharaoh's regal crown, for Pharaoh had sent it unto him to put on at the time of his going to meet his father. And when Joseph came within fifty cubits of his father, he alighted from the chariot, and he walked toward his father. And when all the officers of Egypt and her nobles saw that Joseph had gone on foot toward his father, they also alighted and walked on foot toward Jacob. And when Jacob approached the camp of Joseph, Jacob observed the camp that was coming toward him with Joseph, and it gratified him, and Jacob was astonished at it. And Jacob said unto Judah, Who is that man whom I see in the camp of Egypt, dressed in kingly robes, with a very red garment upon him, and a royal crown upon his head, who has alighted from his chariot, and is coming toward us? And Judah answered his father, saying, He is thy son Joseph, the king. And Jacob rejoiced in seeing the glory of his son. And Joseph came nigh unto his father, and he bowed to his father, and all the men of the camp bowed down to the ground with him before Jacob. And behold, Jacob ran and hastened to his son Joseph, and fell upon his neck and kissed him, and they wept, and Joseph also embraced his father, and kissed him, and they wept, and all the people of Egypt wept with them. And Jacob said unto Joseph, Now I will die cheerfully, after I have seen thy face, that thou art still living and with glory. And the sons of Jacob and their wives and their children and their servants and all the household of Jacob wept exceedingly with Joseph, and they kissed him and wept greatly with him. And Joseph and all his people returned afterward home to Egypt, and Jacob and his sons and all the children of his household came with Joseph to Egypt, and Joseph placed them in the best part of Egypt, in the land of Goshen. And Joseph said unto his father and unto his brethren, I will go up and tell Pharaoh, saying, My brethren and my father's household and all belonging to them have come unto me, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And Joseph did so, and took from his brethren Reuben, Issachar, Zebulun, and his brother Benjamin, and he placed them before Pharaoh. And Joseph spoke unto Pharaoh, saying, My brethren and my father's household and all belonging to them, together with their flocks and cattle, have come unto me from the land of Canaan to sojourn in Egypt, for the famine was sore upon them. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Place thy father and brethren in the best part of the land, withhold not from them all that is good, and cause them to eat of the fat of the land. And Joseph answered, saying, Behold, I have stationed them in the land of Goshen, for they are shepherds, therefore let them remain in Goshen to feed their flocks apart from the Egyptians. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Do with thy brethren all that they shall say unto thee. And the sons of Jacob bowed down to Pharaoh, and they went from him in peace. And Joseph afterward brought his father before Pharaoh. And Jacob came and bowed down to Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh, and he then went out. And Jacob and all his sons and all his household dwelt in the land of Goshen. In the second year, that is in the hundred and thirtieth year of the life of Jacob, Joseph maintained his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their little ones. All the days of the famine they lacked nothing. And Joseph gave unto them the best part of the whole land, the best of Egypt had they all the days of Joseph. And Joseph also gave unto them, and unto the whole of his father's household, clothes and garments year by year. And the sons of Jacob remained securely in Egypt all the days of their brother. And Jacob always ate at Joseph's table. 
Jacob and his sons did not leave Joseph's table day or night, besides what Jacob's children consumed in their houses. And all Egypt ate bread during the days of the famine from the house of Joseph, for all the Egyptians sold all belonging to them on account of the famine. And Joseph purchased all the lands and fields of Egypt for bread on account of Pharaoh. And Joseph supplied all Egypt with bread all the days of the famine. And Joseph collected all the silver and gold that came unto him for the corn which they brought throughout the land. And he accumulated much gold and silver, besides an immense quantity of onyx stones, bdellium, and valuable garments, which they brought unto Joseph from every part of the land when their money was spent. And Joseph took all the silver and gold that came into his hand, about seventy-two talents of gold and silver, and also onyx stones and bdellium in great abundance. And Joseph went and concealed them in four parts, and he concealed one part in the wilderness near the Red Sea, and one part by the river Pirath, and the third and fourth part he concealed in the desert opposite to the wilderness of Persia and Media. And he took part of the gold and silver that was left, and gave it unto all his brothers, and unto all his father's household, and unto all the women of his father's household, and the rest he brought to the house of Pharaoh, about twenty talents of gold and silver. And Joseph gave all the gold and silver that was left unto Pharaoh, and Pharaoh placed it in the treasury, and the days of the famine ceased after that in the land, and they sowed and reaped in the whole land, and they obtained their usual quantity year by year, they lacked nothing. And Joseph dwelt securely in Egypt, and the whole land was under his advice, and his father and all his brethren dwelt in the land of Goshen, and took possession of it. And Joseph was very aged, advanced in days, and his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, remained constantly in the house of Jacob, together with the children of the sons of Jacob, their brethren, to learn the ways of the Lord and his law. And Jacob and his sons dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen, and they took possession in it, and they were fruitful and multiplied in it. Chapter 56 And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years, and the days of Jacob and the years of his life were a hundred and forty-seven years. At that time Jacob was attacked with that illness of which he died, and he sent and called for his son Joseph from Egypt. And Joseph his son came from Egypt, and Joseph came unto his father. And Jacob said unto Joseph and unto his sons, Behold, I die, and the God of your ancestors will visit you, and bring you back to the land which the Lord sware to give unto you, and unto your children after you. Now therefore, when I am dead, bury me in the cave which is in Machpelah, in Hebron, in the land of Canaan, near my ancestors. And Jacob made his son swear to bury him in Machpelah, in Hebron, and his son swore unto him concerning this thing. And he commanded them, saying, Serve the Lord your God, for he who delivered your fathers will also deliver you from all trouble. And Jacob said, Call all your brethren unto me. And all the children of Jacob's sons came and sat before him. And Jacob blessed them, and he said unto them, The Lord God of your fathers shall grant you a thousand times as much and bless you, and may he give you the blessing of your father Abraham. And all the children of Jacob's sons went forth on that day after he had blessed them. And on the next day Jacob again called for his sons, and they all assembled, and came to him, and sat before him. And Jacob on that day blessed his sons before his death. Each man did he bless according to his blessing. Behold, it is written in the book of the law of the Lord appertaining to Israel. And Jacob said unto Judah, I know, my son, that thou art a mighty man for thy brethren. Reign over them, and thy sons shall reign over their sons forever. Only teach thy sons the bow and all the weapons of war, in order that they may fight the battles of their brother who will rule over his enemies. And Jacob again commanded his sons on that day, saying, Behold, I shall be this day gathered unto my people. Carry me up from Egypt, and bury me in the cave of Machpelah, as I have commanded you. Howbeit, take heed, I pray you, that none of your sons carry me, only yourselves, and this is the manner you shall do unto me, when you carry my body to go with it to the land of Canaan to bury me. Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun shall carry my bier at the eastern side, Reuben, Simeon, and Gad at the south, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin at the west, Dan, Asher, and Naphtali at the north. And let not Levi carry with you, for he and his sons will carry the ark of the covenant of the Lord with the Israelites in the camp. Neither let Joseph my son carry, for as a king so let his glory be. Howbeit Ephraim and Manasseh shall be in their stead. Thus shall you do unto me when you carry me away. Do not neglect anything of all that I command you, 
And it shall come to pass, when you do this unto me, that the Lord will remember you favorably, and your children after you forever. And you, my sons, honor each his brother, and his relative, and command your children, and your children's children after you, to serve the Lord God of your ancestors all the days, in order that you may prolong your days in the land, you and your children, and your children's children forever, when you do what is good and upright in the sight of the Lord your God, to go in all his ways. And thou, Joseph, my son, forgive, I pray thee, the prongs of thy brethren, and all their misdeeds and the injury that they heaped upon thee, for God intended it for thine and thy children's benefit. And O oh, my son, leave not thy brethren to the inhabitants of Egypt, neither hurt their feelings, for behold, I consign them to the hand of God, and in thy hand to guard them from the Egyptians. And the sons of Jacob answered their father, saying, O oh, our father, all that thou hast commanded us, so will we do. May God only be with us. And Jacob said unto his sons, So may God be with you, when you keep all his ways. Turn not from his ways, either to the right or the left, in performing what is good and upright in his sight. For I know that many and grievous troubles will befall you in the latter days in the land. Yea, your children and children's children, only serve the Lord, and he will save you from all trouble. And it shall come to pass, when you shall go after God to serve him, and will teach your children after you, and your children's children, to know the Lord. Then will the Lord raise up unto you, and your children, a servant from amongst your children, and the Lord will deliver you through his hand from all affliction, and bring you out of Egypt, and bring you back to the land of your fathers, to inherit it securely. And Jacob ceased commanding his sons, and he drew his feet into the bed. He died, and was gathered to his people. And Joseph fell upon his father, and he cried out, and wept over him, and he kissed him, and he called out in a bitter voice, and he said, O oh, my father, my father! And his son's wives and all his household came and fell upon Jacob, and they wept over him, and cried in a very loud voice concerning Jacob. And all the sons of Jacob rose up together, and they tore their garments, and they all put sackcloth upon their loins, and they fell upon their faces, and they cast dust upon their heads toward the heavens. And the thing was told unto Osnath, Joseph's wife, and she rose up and put on a sack, and she, with all the Egyptian women with her, came and mourned and, and wept for Jacob. And also all the people of Egypt, who knew Jacob, came all on that day, when they heard this thing, and all Egypt wept for many days. And also from the land of Canaan did the women come unto Egypt, when they heard that Jacob was dead, and they wept for him in Egypt for seventy days. And it came to pass, after this, that Joseph commanded his servants, the doctors, to embalm his father with myrrh and frankincense, and all manner of incense and perfume, and the doctors embalmed Jacob, as Joseph had commanded them. And all the people of Egypt, and the elders, and all the inhabitants of the land of Goshen, wept and mourned over Jacob, and all his sons, and the children of his household, lamented and mourned over their father Jacob many days. And after the days of his weeping had passed away, at the end of seventy days, Joseph said unto Pharaoh, I will go up and bury my father in the land of Canaan, as he made me swear, and then I will return. And Pharaoh sent Joseph, saying, Go up and bury thy father as he said, and as he made thee swear. And Joseph rose up with all his brethren to go to the land of Canaan, to bury their father Jacob as he had commanded them. And Pharaoh commanded that it should be proclaimed throughout Egypt, saying, Whoever goeth not up with Joseph and his brethren to the land of Canaan to bury Jacob shall die. And all Egypt heard of Pharaoh's proclamation, and they all rose up together, and the servants of Pharaoh, and the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, went up with Joseph, and all the officers and nobles of Pharaoh went up as the servants of Joseph, and they went to bury Jacob in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Jacob carried the bier upon which he lay, according to all that their father commanded them, so did his sons unto him. And the bier was of pure gold, and it was inlaid round about with onyx stones and bdellium, and the covering of the bier was gold woven work, joined with threads, and over them were hooks of onyx stones and bdellium. And Joseph placed upon the head of his father Jacob a large golden crown, and he put a golden scepter in his hand, and they surrounded the bier, as was the custom of kings during their lives. And all the troops of Egypt went before him in this array. At first, all the mighty men of Pharaoh, and the mighty men of Joseph, and after them, the rest of the inhabitants of Egypt, and they were all girded with swords and equipped with coats of mail, and the trappings of war were upon them. And all the weepers and mourners went at a distance opposite to the bier, going and weeping and lamenting, and the rest of the people went after the bier. And 
and Joseph and his household went together near the bier, barefooted and weeping, and the rest of Joseph's servants went around him. Each man had his ornaments upon him, and they were all armed with their weapons of war. And fifty of Jacob's servants went in front of the bier, and they strewed along the road myrrh and aloes, and all manner of perfume, and all the sons of Jacob that carried the bier walked upon the perfumery, and the servants of Jacob went before them, strewing the perfume along the road. And Joseph went up with a heavy camp, and they did after this manner every day until they reached the land of Canaan. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which was on the other side of Jordan, and they mourned an exceeding great and heavy mourning in that place. And all the kings of Canaan heard of this thing, and they all went forth, each man from his house, thirty-one kings of Canaan, and they all came with their men to mourn and weep over Jacob. And all these kings beheld Jacob's bier, and behold, Joseph's crown was upon it, and they also put their crowns upon the bier, and encircled it with crowns. And all these kings made in that place a great and heavy mourning with the sons of Jacob and Egypt over Jacob, for all the kings of Canaan knew the valor of Jacob and his sons. And the report reached Esau, saying, Jacob died in Egypt, and his sons and all Egypt are conveying him to the land of Canaan to bury him. And Esau heard this thing, and he was dwelling in Mount Seir, and he rose up with his sons and all his people and all his household, a people exceedingly great, and they came to mourn and weep over Jacob. And it came to pass, when Esau came, he mourned for his brother Jacob, and all Egypt and all Canaan again rose up and mourned a great mourning with Esau over Jacob in that place. And Joseph and his brethren brought their father Jacob from that place, and they went to Hebron to bury Jacob in the cave by his fathers. And they came unto Kiriath Arba to the cave, and as they came, Esau stood with his sons against Joseph and his brethren, as a hindrance in the cave, saying, Jacob shall not be buried therein, for it belongeth to us and our father. And Joseph and his brethren heard the words of Esau's sons, and they were exceedingly wroth, and Joseph approached unto Esau, saying, What is this thing which they have spoken? Surely my father Jacob bought it from thee for great riches after the death of Isaac, now five and twenty years ago. And also all the land of Canaan he bought from thee and from thy sons, and thy seed after thee. And Jacob bought it for his sons, and his seed after him for an inheritance forever. And why speakest thou these things this day? And Esau answered, saying, Thou speakest falsely, and utterest lies. For I sold not anything belonging to me in all this land, as thou sayest, Neither did my brother Jacob buy aught belonging to me in this land. And Esau spoke these things in order to deceive Joseph with his words. For Esau knew that Joseph was not present in those days when Esau sold all belonging to him in the land of Canaan to Jacob. And Joseph said unto Esau, Surely my father inserted these things with thee in the record of purchase, and testified the record with witnesses, and behold it is with us in Egypt. And Esau answered, saying unto him, Bring the record. All that thou wilt find in the record, so will we do. And Joseph called unto Naphtali his brother, and he said, Hasten quickly, stay not, and run, I pray thee, to Egypt, and bring all the records, the record of the purchase, the sealed record, and the open record, and also all the first records, in which all the transactions of the birthright are written, fetch thou. And thou shalt bring them unto us hither, that we may know from them all the words of Esau and his sons, which they spoke this day. And Naphtali hearkened to the voice of Joseph, and he hastened, and ran to go down to Egypt, and Naphtali was lighter on foot than any of the stags that were upon the wilderness, for he would go upon ears of corn without crushing them. And when Esau saw that Naphtali had gone to fetch the records, he and his sons increased their resistance against the cave, and Esau and all his people rose up against Joseph and his brethren to battle. And all the sons of Jacob and the people of Egypt fought with Esau and his men, and the sons of Esau and his people were smitten before the sons of Jacob, and the sons of Jacob slew of Esau's people forty men. And Cushim, the son of Dan, the son of Jacob, was at that time with Jacob's sons, but he was about a hundred cubits distant from the place of battle, for he remained with the children of Jacob's sons by Jacob's beer to guard it. And Cushim was dumb and deaf, still he understood the voice of consternation amongst men. And he asked, saying, Why do you not bury the dead? And what is this great consternation? And they answered him the words of Esau and his sons. And he ran to Esau in the midst of the battle, and he slew Esau with a sword, and he cut off his head, and it sprang to a distance, and Esau fell amongst the people of the battle. And when Cushim did this thing, the sons of Jacob prevailed over the sons of Esau, and the sons of Jacob buried their father Jacob by force in the cave, and the sons of Esau beheld it. 
And Jacob was buried in Hebron, in the cave of Machpelah, which Abraham had bought from the sons of Heth for the possession of a burial place, and he was buried in very costly garments. And no king had such honor paid him as Joseph paid unto his father at his death, for he buried him with great honor, like unto the burial of kings. And Joseph and his brethren made a mourning of seven days for their father. Chapter 57 And it was after this that the sons of Esau waged war with the sons of Jacob, and the sons of Esau fought with the sons of Jacob in Hebron, and Esau was still lying dead and not buried. And the battle was heavy between them, and the sons of Esau were smitten before the sons of Jacob, and the sons of Jacob slew of the sons of Esau eighty men, and not one died of the people of the sons of Jacob. And the hand of Joseph prevailed over all the people of the sons of Esau, and he took Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, and fifty of his men captive, and he bound them with chains of iron, and gave them into the hands of his servants to bring them to Egypt. And it came to pass, when the sons of Jacob had taken Zepho and his people captive, all those that remained were greatly afraid of their lives from the house of Esau, lest they should also be taken captive. And they all fled with Eliphaz, the son of Esau, and his people, with Esau's body, and they went on their road to Mount Seir. And they came unto Mount Seir, and they buried Esau in Seir, but they had not brought his head with them to Seir, for it was buried in that place where the battle had been in Hebron. And it came to pass, when the sons of Esau had fled before the sons of Jacob, the sons of Jacob pursued them unto the borders of Seir, but they did not slay a single man from amongst them when they pursued them, for Esau's body which they carried with them excited their confusion. So they fled, and the sons of Jacob turned back from them, and came up to the place where their brethren were in Hebron. And they remained there on that day, and on the next day, until they rested from the battle. And it came to pass on the third day, they assembled all the sons of Seir the Horite, and they assembled all the children of the east, a multitude of people like the sand of the sea, and they went and came down to Egypt to fight with Joseph and his brethren, in order to deliver their brethren. And Joseph and all the sons of Jacob heard that the sons of Esau and the children of the east had come upon them to battle in order to deliver their brethren. And Jacob and his brethren and the strong men of Egypt went forth and fought in the city of Ramesses, and Joseph and his brethren dealt out a tremendous blow against the sons of Esau and the children of the east. And they slew of them six hundred thousand men, and they slew amongst them all the mighty men of the children of Seir the Horite. There were only a few of them left, and they slew also a great many of the children of the east, and of the children of Esau, and Eliphaz the son of Esau, and the children of the east, all fled before Joseph and his brethren. And Joseph and his brethren pursued them until they came unto Succoth, and they yet slew of them in Succoth thirty men, and the rest escaped, and they fled each to his city. And Joseph and his brethren, and the mighty men of Egypt, turned back from them with joy and cheerfulness of heart, for they had smitten all their enemies. And Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, and his men, were still slaves in Egypt to the sons of Jacob, and their pains increased. And when the sons of Esau and the sons of Seir returned to their land, the sons of Seir saw that they had all fallen into the hands of the sons of Jacob and the people of Egypt on account of the battle of the sons of Esau. And the sons of Seir said unto the sons of Esau, You have seen, and therefore you know, that this camp was on your account, and not one mighty man or an adept in war remaineth. Now therefore go forth from our land, go from us to the land of Canaan, to the land of the dwelling of your fathers, wherefore shall your children inherit the effects of our children in latter days? And the children of Esau would not listen to the children of Seir, and the children of Seir considered to make war with them. And the children of Esau sent secretly to Angeas king of Africa, the same as Dinhabah, saying, Send unto us some of thy men, and let them come unto us, and we will fight together with the children of Seir the Horite, for they have resolved to fight with us to drive us away from the land. And Angeas king of Dinhabah did so, for he was in those days friendly to the children of Esau, and Angeas sent five hundred valiant infantry to the children of Esau, and eight hundred cavalry. And the children of Seir sent unto the children of the east, and unto the children of Midian, saying, You have seen what the children of Esau have done unto us, upon whose account we are almost all destroyed, in their battle with the sons of Jacob. Now therefore come unto us, and assist us, and we will fight them together, and we will drive them from the land, and be avenged of the cause of our brethren, who died for their sakes, in their battle with their brethren, the sons of Jacob. And all the children of the east listened to the children of Seir, and they came unto them, about eight hundred men, with drawn swords, and the children of Esau fought with the children of Seir at that time in the wilderness of Paran. 
And the children of Seir prevailed over the sons of Esau, and the children of Seir slew on that day of the children of Esau in that battle about two hundred men of the people of Angeas, king of Dinhabah. And on the second day the children of Esau came again to fight a second time with the children of Seir, and the battle was sore upon the children of Esau this second time, and it troubled them greatly on account of the children of Seir. And when the children of Esau saw that the children of Seir were more powerful than they were, some men of the children of Esau turned and assisted the children of Seir, their enemies. And there fell yet of the people of the children of Esau in the second battle, fifty-eight men of the people at Angeas, king of Dinhabah. And on the third day the children of Esau heard that some of their brethren had turned from them to fight against them in the second battle, and the children of Esau mourned when they heard this thing. And they said, What shall we do unto our brethren who turned from us to assist the children of Seir our enemies? And the children of Esau sent again to Angeas king of Dinhabah, saying, Send unto us other men, that with them we may fight with the children of Seir, for they have already twice been heavier than we were. And Angeas again sent to the children of Esau about six hundred valiant men, and they came to assist the children of Esau. And in ten days' time the children of Esau again waged war with the children of Seir in the wilderness of Paran, and the battle was very severe upon the children of Seir, and the children of Esau prevailed at this time over the children of Seir, and the children of Seir were smitten before the children of Esau, and the children of Esau slew from them about two thousand men. And all the mighty men of the children of Seir died in this battle, and there only remained their young children that were left in their cities. And all Midian and the children of the east betook themselves to flight from the battle, and they left the children of Seir, and they fled when they saw that the battle was severe upon them. And the children of Esau pursued all the children of the east until they reached their land. And the children of Esau slew yet of them, about two hundred and fifty men, and from the people of the children of Esau there fell in that battle about thirty men. But this evil came upon them through their brethren, turning from them to assist the children of Seir the Horite. And the children of Esau again heard of the evil doings of their brethren, and they again mourned on account of this thing. And it came to pass after the battle, the children of Esau turned back and came home unto Seir, and the children of Esau slew those who had remained in the land of the children of Seir. They slew also their wives and little ones. They left not a soul alive, except fifty young lads and damsels whom they suffered to live. And the children of Esau did not put them to death, and the lads became their slaves, and the damsels they took for wives. And the children of Esau dwelt in Seir in the place of the children of Seir, and they inherited their land, and took possession of it. And the children of Esau took all belonging in the land of the children of Seir, also their flocks, their bullocks, and their goods, and all belonging to the children of Seir did the children of Esau take. And the children of Esau dwelt in Seir in the place of the children of Seir unto this day. And the children of Esau divided the land into divisions to the five sons of Esau, according to their families. And it came to pass in those days that the children of Esau resolved to crown a king over them in the land of which they became possessed. And they said to each other, Not so, for he shall reign over us in our land, and we shall be under his counsel, and he shall fight our battles against our enemies. And they did so. And all the children of Esau swore, saying, That none of their brethren should ever reign over them, but a strange man who is not of their brethren. For the souls of all the children of Esau were embittered every man against his son, brother and friend, on account of the evil they sustained from their brethren when they fought with the children of Seir. Therefore the sons of Esau swore, saying, From that day forward they would not choose a king from their brethren, but one from a strange land unto this day. And there was a man there from the people of Angeas, king of Dinhabah. His name was Bela, the son of Beor, who was a very valiant man, beautiful and comely, and wise in all wisdom, and a man of sense and counsel. And there was none of the people of Angeas like unto him. And all the children of Esau took him, and anointed him, and they crowned him for a king, and they bowed down to him, and they said unto him, May the king live, may the king live. And they spread out the sheet, and they brought him each man earrings of gold and silver, or rings of bracelets, and they made him very rich in silver and in gold, in onyx stones and bedellium, and they made him a royal throne, and they placed a regal crown upon his head, and they built a palace for him, and he dwelt therein, and he became king over all the children of Esau. And all the people of Angeas took their hire for their battle from the children of Esau, and they went and returned at that time to their master in Dinhabah. And Bela reigned over the children of Esau thirty years, and the children of Esau dwelt in the land instead of the children of Seir, and they dwelt securely in their stead unto this day. Chapter 58 And it came to pass, in the thirty-second year of the Israelites going down to Egypt, 
that is in the seventy-first year of the life of Joseph. In that year died Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Magron, his son, reigned in his stead. And Pharaoh commanded Joseph before his death to be a father to his son, Magron, and that Magron should be under the care of Joseph and under his counsel. And all Egypt consented to this thing that Joseph should be king over them. For all the Egyptians loved Joseph, as of heretofore, only Magron, the son of Pharaoh, sat upon his father's throne, and he became king in those days in his father's stead. Magron was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and forty years he reigned in Egypt, and all Egypt called his name Pharaoh after the name of his father, as it was their custom to do in Egypt to every king that reigned over them. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh reigned in his father's stead, he placed the laws of Egypt and all the affairs of government in the hand of Joseph as his father had commanded him. And Joseph became king over Egypt, for he superintended over all Egypt, and all Egypt was under his care and under his counsel, for all Egypt inclined to Joseph after the death of Pharaoh, and they loved him exceedingly to reign over them. But there were some people amongst them who did not like him, saying, No stranger shall reign over us. Still the whole government of Egypt devolved in those days upon Joseph after the death of Pharaoh, he being the regulator, doing as he liked throughout the land without anyone interfering. And all Egypt was under the care of Joseph, and Joseph made war with all his surrounding enemies, and he subdued them. Also all the land and all the Philistines under the borders of Canaan did Joseph subdue, and they were all under his power, and they gave a yearly tax unto Joseph. And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, sat upon his throne in his father's stead, but he was under the control and counsel of Joseph, as he was at first under the control of his father. Neither did he reign, but in the land of Egypt only, under the counsel of Joseph, but Joseph reigned over the whole country at that time, from Egypt unto the great river Perath. And Joseph was successful in all his ways, and the Lord was with him, and the Lord gave Joseph additional wisdom and honor and glory and love toward him in the hearts of the Egyptians and throughout the land. And Joseph reigned over the whole country forty years. And all the countries of the Philistines and Canaan and Zidon and on the other side of Jordan brought presents unto Joseph all his days, and the whole country was in the hand of Joseph, and they brought unto him a yearly tribute as it was regulated, for Joseph had fought against all his surrounding enemies and subdued them, and the whole country was in the hand of Joseph, and Joseph sat securely upon his throne in Egypt. And also all his brethren, the sons of Jacob, dwelt securely in the land all the days of Joseph, and they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly in the land, and they served the Lord all their days, as their father Jacob had commanded them. And it came to pass, at the end of many days and years, when the children of Esau were dwelling quietly in their land with Bela their king, that the children of Esau were fruitful and multiplied in the land, and they resolved to go and fight with the sons of Jacob and all Egypt, and to deliver their brother Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, and his men, for they were yet in those days slaves to Joseph. And the children of Esau sent unto all the children of the east, and they made peace with them, and all the children of the east came unto them to go with the children of Esau to Egypt to battle. And there came also unto them of the people of Angeas, king of Dinhabah, and they also sent unto the children of Ishmael, and they also came unto them. And all this people assembled and came unto Seir to assist the children of Esau in their battle, and this camp was very large and heavy with people, numerous as the sand of the sea, about eight hundred thousand men, infantry and cavalry, and all these troops went down to Egypt to fight with the sons of Jacob, and they encamped by Ramses. And Joseph went forth with his brethren, with the mighty men of Egypt, about six hundred men, and they fought with them in the land of Ramses. And the sons of Jacob at that time again fought with the children of Esau, in the fiftieth year of the sons of Jacob going down to Egypt. That is the thirtieth year of the reign of Bela over the children of Esau and Seir. And the Lord gave all the mighty men of Esau and the children of the east into the hand of Joseph and his brethren. And the people of the children of Esau and the children of the east were smitten before Joseph. And of the people of Esau and the children of the east that were slain, there fell before the sons of Jacob about two hundred thousand men. And their king, Bela, the son of Beor, fell with them in the battle. And when the children of Esau saw that their king had fallen in battle and was dead, their hands became weak in the combat. And Joseph and his brethren, and all Egypt, were still smiting the people of the house of Esau, and all Esau's people were afraid of the sons of Jacob, and fled from before them. And Joseph and his brethren, and all Egypt, pursued them a day's journey, and they slew yet from them 
about three hundred men, continuing to smite them in the road, and they afterward turned back from them. And Joseph and all his brethren returned to Egypt, not one man was missing from them. But of the Egyptians there fell twelve men. And when Joseph returned to Egypt, he ordered Zepho and his men to be additionally bound, and they bound them in irons, and they increased their grief. And all the people of the children of Esau and the children of the east returned in shame, each unto his city, for all the mighty men that were with them had fallen in battle. And when the children of Esau saw that their king had died in battle, and when the children of Esau saw that their king had died in battle, they hastened and took a man from the people of the children of the east, his name was Jobab, the son of Zerak, from the land of Bozrah, and they caused him to reign over them, instead of Bela their king. And Jobab sat upon the throne of Bela as king in his stead, and Jobab reigned in Edom over all the children of Esau ten years, and the children of Esau went no more to fight with the sons of Jacob from that day forward. For the sons of Esau knew the valor of the sons of Jacob, and they were greatly afraid of them. But from that day forward the children of Esau hated the sons of Jacob, and the hatred and enmity were very strong between them all the days unto this day. And it came to pass after this, at the end of ten years, Jobab, the son of Zerach, from Bozrah, died, and the children of Esau took a man whose name was Chusham, from the land of Teman, and they made him king over them instead of Jobab, and Chusham reigned in Edom over all the children of Esau for twenty years. And Joseph, king of Egypt, and his brethren, and all the children of Israel, dwelt securely in Egypt in those days, together with all the children of Joseph and his brethren, having no hindrance or evil accident, and the land of Egypt was at that time at rest from war in the days of Joseph and his brethren. Chapter 59 And these are the names of the sons of Israel who dwelt in Egypt, who had come with Jacob. All the sons of Jacob came unto Egypt, every man with his household. The children of Leah were Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, and their sister Dina. And the sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. And the sons of Zilpah, the handmaid of Leah, were Gad and Asher. And the sons of Bilhah, the handmaid of Rachel, were Dan and Naphtali. And these were their offspring that were born unto them in the land of Canaan before they came unto Egypt with their father Jacob. The sons of Reuben were Chanuk, Palu, Chetzron, and Carmi. And the sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zokar, and Saul, the son of the Canaanitish woman. And the children of Levi were Gershon, Kehath, and Merari, and their sister Jochebed, who was born unto them in their going down to Egypt. And the sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerach. And Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan, and the sons of Perez were Chezron and Kamul. And the sons of Issachar were Tola, Puva, Job, and Shamron. And the sons of Zebulun were Sered, Elon, Jakliel, and the son of Dan was Chushim. And the sons of Naphtali were Jaxiel, Gunai, Jetzer, and Shilam. And the sons of Gad were Ziphion, Chagai, Shunai, Esbon, Eri, Aradai, and Aralai. And the children of Asher were Jimna, Jishva, Jishvai, Bariah, and their sister Sirach. And the sons of Bariah were Chaber and Malkiel. And the sons of Benjamin were Bela, Bacher, Ashbel, Gira, Naaman, Achai, Rosh, Mupim, Chupim, and Ord. And the sons of Joseph that were born unto him in Egypt were Manasseh and Ephraim. And all the souls that went forth from the loins of Jacob were seventy souls. These are they who came with Jacob their father unto Egypt to dwell there. And Joseph and all his brethren dwelt securely in Egypt, and they ate of the best of Egypt all the days of the life of Joseph. And Joseph lived in the land of Egypt ninety-three years, and Joseph reigned over all Egypt eighty years. And when the days of Joseph drew nigh that he should die, he sent and called for his brethren and all his father's household, and they all came together and sat before him. And Joseph said unto his brethren and unto the whole of his father's household, Behold, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you up from this land to the land which he swore to your fathers to give unto them. And it shall be when God shall visit you to bring you up from here to the land of your fathers, then bring up my bones with you from here. 
And Joseph made all the sons of Israel to swear for their seed after them, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall bring up my bones with you from here. And it came to pass after this that Joseph died in that year, the seventy-first year of the Israelites going down to Egypt. And Joseph was one hundred and ten years old when he died in the land of Egypt, and all his brethren and all his servants rose up, and they embalmed Joseph, as was their custom, and his brethren and all Egypt mourned over him for seventy days. And they put Joseph in a coffin, filled with spices and all sorts of perfume, and they buried him by the side of the river that is Sihor, and his sons and all his brethren and the whole of his father's household made a seven days mourning for him. And it came to pass, after the death of Joseph, all the Egyptians began in those days to rule over the children of Israel, and Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who reigned in his father's stead, took all the laws of Egypt, and conducted the whole government of Egypt under his counsel, and he reigned securely over his people. Chapter 60 And when the year came round, being the seventy-second year from the Israelites going down to Egypt, after the death of Joseph, Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, fled from Egypt, he and his men, and they went away. And he came to Africa, which is Dinhabah, to Angeas king of Africa, and Angeas received them with great honor, and he made Zepho the captain of his host. And Zepho found favor in the sight of Angeas, in the sight of his people, and Zepho was captain of the host to Angeas, king of Africa, for many days. And Zepho enticed Angeas, king of Africa, to collect all his army, to go and fight with the Egyptians, and with the sons of Jacob, and to avenge of them the cause of his brethren. But Angeas would not listen to Zepho to do this thing, for Angeas knew the strength of the sons of Jacob, and what they had done to his army in their warfare with the children of Esau. And Zepho was in those days very great in the sight of Angeas, and in the sight of all his people, and he continually enticed them to make war against Egypt, but they would not. And it came to pass in those days, there was in the land of Kittim, a man in the city of Puzimna, whose name was Uzu, and he became degenerately deified by the children of Kittim. And the man died and had no son, only one daughter, whose name was Janiah. And the damsel was exceedingly beautiful, comely and intelligent, and there was none seen like unto her for beauty and wisdom throughout the land. And the people of Angeas, king of Africa, saw her, and they came and praised her unto him. And Angeas sent to the children of Kittim, and he requested to take her unto himself for a wife, and the people of Kittim consented to give her unto him for a wife. And when the messengers of Angeas were going forth from the land of Kittim to take their journey, behold, the messengers of Ternus, king of Bibentu, came unto Kittim, for Ternus, king of Bibentu, also sent his messengers to request Janiah for him to take unto himself for a wife, for all his men had also praised her to him, therefore he sent all his servants unto her. And the servants of Ternus came to Kittim, and they asked for Janiah to be taken unto Ternus their king for a wife. And the people of Kittim said unto them, We cannot give her, because Angeas king of Africa desired her to take her unto him for a wife before you came, and that we should give her unto him. And now therefore we cannot do this thing to deprive Angeas of the damsel, in order to give her unto Ternus. For we are greatly afraid of Angeas, lest he come in battle against us, and destroy us, and Ternus your master will not be able to deliver us from his hand. And when the messengers of Ternus heard all the words of the children of Kittim, they turned back to their master and told him all the words of the children of Kittim. And the children of Kittim sent a memorial to Angeas, saying, Behold, Ternus has sent for Janiah to take her unto him for a wife, and thus have we answered him. And we heard that he has collected his whole army to go to war against thee, and he intends to pass by the road of Sardunia to fight against thy brother Lucas, and after that he will come to fight against thee. And Angeas heard all the words of the children of Kittim, which they sent to him in the record, and his anger was kindled, and he rose up and assembled his whole army, and came through the islands of the sea, the road to Sardunia, unto his brother Lucas, king of Sardunia. And Niblos, the son of Lucas, heard that his uncle Angeas was coming, and he went out to meet him with a heavy army, and he kissed him and embraced him. And Niblos said unto Angeas, When thou askest my father after his welfare, when I shall go with thee to fight with Ternus, ask of him to make me captain of his host. And Angeas did so, and he came unto his brother, and his brother came to meet him, and he asked him after his welfare. And Angeas asked his brother Lucas after his welfare, and to make his son Niblos captain of his host, and Lucas did so. And Angeas and his brother Lucas rose up, and they went toward Ternus to battle, and there was with them a great army and a heavy people. And he came in ships, and they came into the province of Ashtarash, and behold, Ternus came toward them, for he went forth to Sardunia, and intended to destroy it, and afterward to pass on from there to Angeas to fight with him. And Angeas and Lucas his brother met Ternus in the valley of Canopia, 
and the battle was strong and mighty between them in that place. And the battle was severe upon Lucas, king of Sardunia, and his army fell, and Niblos, his son, fell also in that battle. And his uncle Angius commanded his servants, and they made a golden coffin for Niblos, and they put him into it. And Angius again waged battle toward Turnus, and Angius was stronger than he, and he slew him, and he smote all his people with the edge of the sword. And Angius avenged the cause of Niblos his brother's son, and the cause of the army of his brother Lucas. And when Turnus died, the hands of those that survived the battle became weak, and they fled from before Angius and Lucas his brother. And Angius and his brother Lucas pursued them unto the high road, which is between Alphanu and Roma, and they slew the whole army of Turnus with the edge of the sword. And Lucas, king of Sardunia, commanded his servants that they should make a coffin of brass, and that they should place therein the body of his son Niblos, and they buried him in that place. And they built upon it a high tower there upon the high road, and they called its name after the name of Niblos unto this day. And they also buried Turnus, king of Bibentu, there in that place with Niblos. And behold, upon the high road between Alphanu and Roma, the grave of Niblos is on one side, and the grave of Turnus on the other and a pavement between them unto this day. And when Niblos was buried, Lucas his father returned with his army to his land Sardunia, and Angius his brother, king of Africa, went with his people unto the city of Bibentu, that is the city of Turnus. And the inhabitants of Bibentu heard of his fame, and they were greatly afraid of him, and they went forth to meet him with weeping and supplication, and the inhabitants of Bibentu entreated of Angius not to slay them, nor destroy their city, and he did so. For Bibentu was in those days reckoned as one of the cities of the children of Kittim. Therefore he did not destroy the city. But from that day forward, the troops of the king of Africa would go to Kittim to spoil and plunder it. And whenever they went, Zepho, the captain of the host of Angius, would go with them. And it was after this that Angius turned with his army, and they came to the city of Puzimna. And Angius took thence Janiah, the daughter of Uzu, for a wife, and brought her unto his city, unto Africa. Chapter 61 And it came to pass, at that time, Pharaoh king of Egypt commanded all his people to make for him a strong palace in Egypt. And he also commanded the sons of Jacob to assist the Egyptians in the building. And the Egyptians made a beautiful and elegant palace for a royal habitation, and he dwelt therein, and he renewed his government, and he reigned securely. And Zebulun, the son of Jacob, died in that year, that is the seventy-second year of the going down of the Israelites to Egypt. And Zebulun died a hundred and fourteen years old, and was put into a coffin, and given into the hands of his children. And in the seventy-fifth year died his brother Simeon. He was a hundred and twenty years old at his death, and he was also put into a coffin, and given into the hands of his children. And Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, captain of the host to Angius, king of Dinhabah, was still daily enticing Angius to prepare for battle to fight with the sons of Jacob in Egypt, and Angius was unwilling to do this thing. For his servants had related to him all the might of the sons of Jacob, what they had done unto them in their battle with the children of Esau. And Zepho was in those days daily enticing Angius to fight with the sons of Jacob in those days. And after some time, Angius hearkened to the words of Zepho, and consented to him to fight with the sons of Jacob in Egypt. And Angius got all his people in order, a people numerous as the sand which is upon the seashore, and he formed his resolution to go to Egypt to battle. And amongst the servants of Angius was a youth fifteen years old, Balaam the son of Beor was his name, and the youth was very wise, and understood the art of witchcraft. And Angius said unto Balaam, Conjure for us, I pray thee, with the witchcraft, that we may know who will prevail in this battle to which we are now proceeding. And Balaam ordered that they should bring him wax, and he made thereof the likeness of chariots and horsemen, representing the army of Angius and the army of Egypt, and he put them in the cunningly prepared waters that he had for that purpose, and he took in his hand the bows of myrtle trees, and he exercised his cunning, and he joined them over the water. And there appeared unto him in the water the resembling images of the hosts of Angius falling before the resembling images of the Egyptians and the sons of Jacob. And Balaam told this thing to Angius, and Angius despaired, and did not arm himself to go down to Egypt to battle, and he remained in his city. And when Zepho the son of Eliphaz saw that Angius despaired of going forth to battle with the Egyptians, Zepho fled from Angius from Africa, and he went and came unto Kittim. And all the people of Kittim received him with great honor, and they hired him to fight their battles all the days, and Zepho became exceedingly rich in those days. And the troops of the king of Africa still spread themselves in those days, and the children of Kittim assembled and went to Mount Kuptesia on account of the troops of Angius, king of Africa, who were advancing upon them. And it was one day that Zepho lost a young heifer, and he went to seek it, and he heard it lowing round about the mountain. 
And Zepho went, and he saw, and behold, there was a large cave at the bottom of the mountain, and there was a great stone there at the entrance of the cave. And Zepho split the stone, and he came into the cave, and he looked, and behold, a large animal was devouring the ox. From the middle upward, it resembled a man, and from the middle downward, it resembled an animal. And Zepho rose up against the animal, and slew it with his swords. And the inhabitants of Kittim heard of this thing, and they rejoiced exceedingly, and they said, What shall we do unto this man who has slain this animal, that devoured our cattle? And they all assembled to consecrate one day in the year to him, and they called the name thereof Zepho after his name. And they brought unto him drink offerings year after year on that day, and they brought unto him gifts. At that time, Janiah the daughter of Uzu, wife of King Angeas, became ill, and her illness was heavily felt by Angeas and his officers. And Angeas said unto his wise men, What shall I do unto Janiah? And how shall I heal her from her illness? And his wise men said unto him, Because the air of our country is not like the air of the land of Kittim, and our water is not like their water, therefore from this has the queen become ill. For through the change of air and water she became ill, and also because in her country she drank only the water which came from Perma, which her ancestors had brought up with bridges. And Angeas commanded his servants, and they brought unto him in vessels of the waters of Perma belonging to Kittim, and they weighed those waters with all the waters of the land of Africa, and they found those waters lighter than the waters of Africa. And Angeas saw this thing, and he commanded all his officers to assemble the hewers of stone in thousands and tens of thousands, and they hewed stone without number. And the builders came, and they built an exceedingly strong bridge, and they conveyed the spring of water from the land of Kittim unto Africa. And those waters were for Janiah the queen, and for all her concerns, to drink from, and to bake, wash, and bathe therewith, and also to water therewith all seed from which food can be obtained, and all fruit of the ground. And the king commanded that they should bring of the soil of Kittim in large ships, and they also brought stones to build therewith. And the builders built palaces for Janiah the queen, and the queen became healed of her illness. And at the revolution of the year, the troops of Africa continued coming to the land of Kittim to plunder as usual. And Zepho, son of Eliphaz, heard their report, and he gave orders concerning them, and he fought with them, and they fled before him, and he delivered the land of Kittim from them. And the children of Kittim saw the valor of Zepho, and the children of Kittim resolved, and they made Zepho king over them, and he became king over them. And whilst he reigned, they went to subdue the children of Tubal and all the surrounding islands. And their king Zepho went at their head, and they made war with Tubal and the islands, and they subdued them. And when they returned from the battle, they renewed his government for him, and they built for him a very large palace for his royal habitation and seat, and they made a large throne for him. And Zepho reigned over the whole land of Kittim and over the land of Italia fifty years. Chapter 62 In that year, being the seventy-ninth year of the Israelites going down to Egypt, died Reuben the son of Jacob in the land of Egypt. Reuben was a hundred and twenty-five years old when he died, and they put him into a coffin, and he was given into the hands of his children. And in the eightieth year died his brother Dan. He was a hundred and twenty years at his death, and he was also put into a coffin, and given into the hands of his children. And in that year died Chusham, king of Edom, and after him reigned Hadad the son of Bedad, for thirty-five years. And in the eighty-first year died Issachar, the son of Jacob, in Egypt. And Issachar was a hundred and twenty-two years old at his death, and he was put into a coffin in Egypt, and given into the hands of his children. And in the eighty-second year died Asher, his brother. He was a hundred and twenty-three years old at his death, and he was placed in a coffin in Egypt, and given into the hands of his children. And in the eighty-third year died Gad, and he was a hundred and twenty-five years old at his death, and he was put into a coffin in Egypt, and given into the hands of his children. And it came to pass, in the eighty-fourth year, that is the fiftieth year of the reign of Hadad, son of Bedad, king of Edom, that Hadad assembled all the children of Esau, and he got his whole army in readiness, about four hundred thousand men, and he directed his way to the land of Moab, and he went to fight with Moab, and to make them tributary to him. And the children of Moab heard this thing, and they were very much afraid, and they sent to the children of Midian to assist them in fighting with Hadad, son of Bedad, king of Edom. And Hadad came unto the land of Moab, and Moab and the children of Midian went out to meet him, and they placed themselves in battle array against him in the field of Moab. And Hadad fought with Moab, and there fell of the children of Moab and the children of Midian many slain ones, about two hundred thousand men. And the battle was very severe upon Moab, and when the children of Moab saw that the battle was sore upon them, they weakened their hands and turned their backs, and left the children of Midian to carry on the battle. And the children of Midian knew not the intentions of Moab, 
but they strengthened themselves in battle, and fought with Hadad and all his host, and all Midian fell before him. And Hadad smote all Midian with a heavy smiting, and he slew them with the edge of the sword. He left none remaining of those who came to assist Moab. And when all the children of Midian had perished in battle, and the children at Moab had escaped, Hadad made all Moab at that time tributary to him, and they became under his hand, and they gave a yearly tax as it was ordered. And Hadad turned and went back to his land. And at the revolution of the year, when the rest of the people of Midian that were in the land heard that all their brethren had fallen in battle with Hadad for the sake of Moab, because the children of Moab had turned their backs in battle and left Midian to fight, then five of the princes of Midian resolved with the rest of their brethren who remained in their land to fight with Moab to avenge the cause of their brethren. And the children of Midian sent to all their brethren, the children of the east, and all their brethren, all the children of Keturah, came to assist Midian to fight with Moab. And the children of Moab heard this thing, and they were greatly afraid that all the children of the east had assembled together against them for battle. And they, the children of Moab, sent a memorial to the land of Edom to Hadad the son of Bedad, saying, Come now unto us, and assist us, and we will smite Midian, for they have assembled together, and have come against us with all their brethren, the children of the east, to battle, to avenge the cause of Midian that fell in battle. And Hadad, son of Bedad, king of Edom, went forth with his whole army, and went to the land of Moab to fight with Midian. And Midian and the children of the east fought with Moab in the field of Moab, and the battle was very fierce between them. And Hadad smote all the children of Midian, and the children of the east with the edge of the sword. And Hadad at that time delivered Moab from the hand of Midian, and those that remained of Midian and of the children of the east fled before Hadad and his army. And Hadad pursued them to their land, and smote them with a very heavy slaughter, and the slain fell in the road. And Hadad delivered Moab from the land of Midian, for all the children of Midian had fallen by the edge of the sword, and Hadad turned and went back to his land. And from that day forth the children of Midian hated the children of Moab, because they had fallen in battle for their sake, and there was a great and mighty enmity between them all the days. And all that were found of Midian in the road of the land of Moab perished by the sword of Moab, and all that were found of Moab in the road of the land of Midian perished by the sword of Midian. Thus did Midian unto Moab, and Moab unto Midian for many days. And it came to pass at that time that Judah the son of Jacob died in Egypt, in the eighty-sixth year of Jacob's going down to Egypt. And Judah was a hundred and twenty-nine years old at his death, and they embalmed him, and put him into a coffin, and he was given into the hands of his children. And in the eighty-ninth year died Naphtali, he was a hundred and thirty-two years old, and he was put into a coffin, and given into the hands of his children. And it came to pass in the ninety-first year of the Israelites going down to Egypt, that is in the thirtieth year of the reign of Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, over the children of Kittim. The children of Africa came upon the children of Kittim to plunder them as usual, but they had not come upon them for these thirteen years. And they came to them in that year, and Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, went out to them with some of his men, and smote them desperately, and the troops of Africa fled from before Zepho, and the slain fell before him, and Zepho and his men pursued them, going on and smiting them until they were near unto Africa. And Angeas, king of Africa, heard the thing which Zepho had done, and it vexed him exceedingly, and Angeas was afraid of Zepho all the days. Chapter 63 And in the ninetieth year died Levi, the son of Jacob, in Egypt. And Levi was a hundred and thirty-seven years old when he died, and they put him into a coffin, and he was given into the hands of his children. And it came to pass after the death of Levi, when all Egypt saw that the sons of Jacob, the brethren of Joseph, were dead, all the Egyptians began to afflict the children of Jacob, and to embitter their lives from that day unto the day of their going forth from Egypt. And they took from their hands all the vineyards and fields which Joseph had given unto them, and all the elegant houses in which the people of Israel lived, and all the fat of Egypt, the Egyptians took all from the sons of Jacob in those days. And the land of Egypt became more grievous in those days against the children of Israel, and the Egyptians injured the Israelites, until the children of Israel were wearied of their lives on account of the Egyptians. And it came to pass in those days, in the hundred and second year of Israel's going down to Egypt, that Pharaoh, king of Egypt, died, and Malal his son reigned in his stead, and all the mighty men of Egypt, and all that generation which knew Joseph and his brethren died in those days. And another generation rose up in their stead, which had not known the sons of Jacob, and all the good which they had done to them, and all their might in Egypt. Therefore all Egypt began from that day forth to embitter the lives of the sons of Jacob, and to afflict them with all manner of hard labor, because they had not known their ancestors who had delivered them in the days of the famine. And this was also from the Lord, for the children of Israel, to benefit them in their latter days, in order that all the children of Israel might know the Lord their God. 
and in order to know the signs and mighty wonders which the Lord would do in Egypt on account of his people Israel, in order that the children of Israel might fear the Lord God of their ancestors, and walk in all his ways, they and their seed after them all the days. Malal was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned ninety-four years, and all Egypt called his name Pharaoh, after the name of his father, as it was their custom to do every king who reigned over them in Egypt. At that time, all the troops of Angeas, king of Africa, went forth to spread along the land of Kittim as usual for plunder. And Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, heard their report, and he went forth to meet them with his army, and he fought them there in the road. And Zepho smote the troops of the king of Africa with the edge of the sword, and left none remaining of them, and not even one returned to his master in Africa. And Angeas heard of this which Zepho the son of Eliphaz had done to all his troops, that he had destroyed them, and Angeas assembled all his troops, all the men of the land of Africa, a people numerous like the sand of the seashore. And Angeas sent to Lucas his brother, saying, Come to me with all thy men, and help me to smite Zepho, and all the children of Kittim who have destroyed my men. And Lucas came with his whole army, a very great force, to assist Angeas his brother to fight with Zepho and the children of Kittim. And Zepho and the children of Kittim heard this thing, and they were greatly afraid, and a great terror fell upon their hearts. And Zepho also sent a letter to the land of Edom, to Hadad, the son of Bedad, king of Edom, and to all the children of Esau, saying, I have heard that Angeas, king of Africa, is coming to us with his brother for battle against us, and we are greatly afraid of him, for his army is very great, particularly as he comes against us with his brother, and his army likewise. Now therefore, come you also up with me, and help me, and we will fight together against Angeas and his brother Lucas, and you will save us out of their hands, but if not, know ye that we shall all die. And the children of Esau sent a letter to the children of Kittim, and to Zepho their king, saying, We cannot fight against Angeas and his people, for a covenant of peace has been between us these many years. From the days of Bela the first king, and from the days of Joseph the son of Jacob king of Egypt, with whom we fought on the other side of Jordan when he buried his father. And when Zepho heard the words of his brethren, the children of Esau, he refrained from them, and Zepho was greatly afraid of Angeas. And Angeas and Lucas his brother arrayed all their forces, about eight hundred thousand men, against the children of Kittim. And all the children of Kittim said unto Zepho, Pray for us to the God of thy ancestors, for adventure he may deliver us from the hand of Angeas and his army, for we have heard that he is a great God, and that he delivers all who trust in him. And Zepho heard their words, and Zepho sought the Lord, and he said, O Lord, God of Abraham, and Isaac my ancestors, this day I know that thou art a true God, and all the gods of the nations are vain and useless. Remember now this day unto me thy covenant with Abraham our father, which our ancestors related unto us, and do graciously with me this day for the sake of Abraham and Isaac our fathers, and save me and the children of Kittim from the hand of the king of Africa, who comes against us for battle. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Zepho, and he had regard for him on account of Abraham and Isaac. And the Lord delivered Zepho and the children of Kittim from the hand of Angeas and his people. And Zepho fought Angeas king of Africa, and all his people on that day, and the Lord gave all the people of Angeas into the hands of the children of Kittim. And the battle was severe upon Angeas, and Zepho smote all the men of Angeas and Lucas his brother with the edge of the sword, and there fell from them unto the evening of that day about four hundred thousand men. And when Angeas saw that all his men perished, he sent a letter to all the inhabitants of Africa to come to him, to assist him in the battle, and he wrote in the letter, saying, All who are found in Africa, let them come unto me from ten years old and upward, let them all come unto me, and behold, if he comes not, he shall die. And all that he has, with his whole household, the king will take. And all the rest of the inhabitants of Africa were terrified at the words of Angeas, and there went out of the city about three hundred thousand men and boys, from ten years upward, and they came to Angeas. And at the end of ten days, Angeas renewed the battle against Zepho, and the children of Kittim, and the battle was very great and strong between them. And from the army of Angeas and Lucas, Zepho sent many of the wounded unto his hand, about two thousand men, and Sosipater, the king of the host of Angeas, fell in that battle. And when Sosipater had fallen, the African troops turned their backs to flee, and they fled, and Angeas and Lucas his brother were with them. And Zepho and the children of Kittim pursued them, and they smote them still heavily on the road, about two hundred men, and they pursued Azdrubal, the son of Angeas, who had fled with his father, and they smote twenty of his men in the road, and Azdrubal escaped from the children of Kittim, and they did not slay him. And Angeas and Lucas his brother fled with the rest of their men, and they escaped and came into Africa with terror and consternation. And Angeas feared all the days, lest Zepho the son of Eliphaz should go to war with him. Chapter 64 
And Balaam, the son of Beor, was at that time with Angeus in the battle. When he saw that Zepho prevailed over Angeus, he fled from there and came to Ketim. And Zepho and the children of Ketim received him with great honor, for Zepho knew Balaam's wisdom, and Zepho gave unto Balaam many gifts, and he remained with him. And when Zepho had returned from the war, he commanded all the children of Ketim to be numbered who had gone into battle with him, and behold, not one was missed. And Zepho rejoiced at this thing, and he renewed his kingdom, and he made a feast to all his subjects. But Zepho remembered not the Lord, and considered not that the Lord had helped him in battle, and that he had delivered him and his people from the hand of the king of Africa, but still walked in the ways of the children of Ketim and the wicked children of Esau, to serve other gods which his brethren, the children of Esau, had taught him. It is therefore said, From the wicked goes forth wickedness. And Zepho reigned over all the children of Ketim securely, but knew not the Lord who had delivered him and all his people from the hand of the king of Africa. And the troops of Africa came no more to Ketim to plunder as usual, for they knew of the power of Zepho, who had smitten them all at the edge of the sword. So Angeus was afraid of Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, and the children of Ketim all the days. At that time, when Zepho had returned from the war, and when Zepho had seen how he prevailed over all the people of Africa, and had smitten them in battle at the edge of the sword, then Zepho advised with the children of Ketim to go to Egypt to fight with the sons of Jacob and with Pharaoh king of Egypt. For Zepho heard that the mighty men of Egypt were dead, and that Joseph and his brethren the sons of Jacob were dead, and that all their children, the children of Israel, remained in Egypt. And Zepho considered to go to fight against them in all Egypt, to avenge the cause of his brethren, the children of Esau, whom Joseph with his brethren and all Egypt had smitten in the land of Canaan, when they went up to bury Jacob in Hebron. And Zepho sent messengers to Hadad, son of Bedad, king of Edom, and to all his brethren, the children of Esau, saying, Did you not say that you would not fight against the king of Africa, for he is a member of your covenant? Behold, I fought with him and smote him and all his people. Now therefore I have resolved to fight against Egypt and the children of Jacob who are there, and I will be revenged of them for what Joseph and his brethren and ancestors did to us in the land of Canaan when they went up to bury their father in Hebron. Now then, if you are willing to come to me to assist me in fighting against them in Egypt, then shall we avenge the cause of our brethren. And the children of Esau hearkened to the words of Zepho, and the children of Esau gathered themselves together, a very great people, and they went to assist Zepho and the children of Ketim in battle. And Zepho sent to all the children of the east, and to all the children of Ishmael, with words like unto these, and they gathered themselves, and came to the assistance of Zepho and the children of Ketim in the war upon Egypt. And all these kings, the king of Edom, and the children of the east, and all the children of Ishmael, and Zepho, the king of Ketim, went forth, and arrayed all their hosts in Hebron. And the camp was very heavy, extending in length a distance of three days' journey, a people numerous as the sand upon the seashore, which cannot be counted. And all these kings and their hosts went down and came against all Egypt in battle, and encamped together in the valley of Pathros. And all Egypt heard their report, and they also gathered themselves together, all the people of the land of Egypt, and of all the cities belonging to Egypt, about three hundred thousand men. And the men of Egypt sent also to the children of Israel, who were in those days in the land of Goshen, to come to them in order to go and fight with these kings. And the men of Israel assembled and were about one hundred and fifty men, and they went into battle to assist the Egyptians. And the men of Israel and of Egypt went forth, about three hundred thousand men and one hundred and fifty men, and they went toward these kings to battle, and they placed themselves from without the land of Goshen opposite Pathros. And the Egyptians believed not in Israel to go with them in their camps together for battle, for all the Egyptians said, Perhaps the children of Israel will deliver us into the hand of the children of Esau and Ishmael, for they are their brethren. And all the Egyptians said unto the children of Israel, Remain you here together in your stand, and we will go and fight against the children of Esau and Ishmael. And if these kings should prevail over us, then come you all together upon them, and assist us. And the children of Israel did so. And Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, king of Ketim, and Hadad, the son of Bedad, king of Edom, and all their camps, and all the children of the east, and children of Ishmael, a people numerous as sand, and camped together in the valley of Pathros, opposite Tachpanches. And Balaam, the son of Beor the Syrian, was there in the camp of Zepho, for he came with the children of Ketim to the battle. And Balaam was a man highly honored in the eyes of Zepho and his men. And Zepho said unto Balaam, Try by divination for us, that we may know who will prevail in the battle, we or the Egyptians. 
and Balaam rose up and tried the art of divination, and he was skillful in the knowledge of it, but he was confused, and the work was destroyed in his hand. And he tried it again, but it did not succeed, and Balaam despaired of it, and left it, and did not complete it, for this was from the Lord, in order to cause Zepho and his people to fall into the hand of the children of Israel, who had trusted in the Lord, the God of their ancestors, in their war. And Zepho and Hadad put their forces in battle array, and all the Egyptians went alone against them, about three hundred thousand men, and not one man of Israel was with them. And all the Egyptians fought with these kings opposite Pathros and Tachpanches, and the battle was severe against the Egyptians. And the kings were stronger than the Egyptians in that battle, and about one hundred and eighty men of Egypt fell on that day, and about thirty men of the forces of the kings, and all the men of Egypt fled from before the kings. So the children of Esau pursued the Egyptians, continuing to smite them unto the place where was the camp of the children of Israel. And all the Egyptians cried unto the children of Israel, saying, Hasten to us, and assist us, and save us from the hand of Esau, Ishmael, and the children of Ketim. And the hundred and fifty men of the children of Israel ran from their station to the camps of these kings, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord their God to deliver them. And the Lord hearkened to Israel, and the Lord gave all the men of the kings into their hand, and the children of Israel fought against these kings, and the children of Israel smote about four thousand of the king's men. And the Lord threw a great consternation in the camp of the kings, so that the fear of the children of Israel fell upon them. And all the hosts of the kings fled from before the children of Israel, and the children of Israel pursued them, continuing to smite them, unto the borders of the land of Cush. And the children of Israel slew of them in the road yet two thousand men, and of the children of Israel not one fell. And when the Egyptians saw that the children of Israel had fought with such few men with the kings, and that the battle was so very severe against them, all the Egyptians were greatly afraid of their lives on account of the strong battle, and all Egypt fled, every man hiding himself from the arrayed forces, and they hid themselves in the road, and they left the Israelites to fight. And the children of Israel inflicted a terrible blow upon the king's men, and they returned from them after they had driven them to the border of the land of Cush. And all Israel knew the thing which the men of Egypt had done to them, that they had fled from them in battle, and had left them to fight alone. So the children of Israel also acted with cunning, and as the children of Israel returned from battle, they found some of the Egyptians in the road, and smote them there. And whilst they slew them, they said unto them these words, Wherefore did you go from us, and leave us, being a few people, to fight against these kings who had a great people to smite us, that you might thereby deliver your own souls? And some of which the Israelites met on the road, they the children of Israel spoke to each other, saying, Smite! Smite! For he is an Ishmaelite, or an Edomite, or from the children of Ketim. And they stood over him, and slew him and they knew that he was an Egyptian. And the children of Israel did these things cunningly against the Egyptians, because they had deserted them in battle, and had fled from them. And the children of Israel slew of the men of Egypt in the road in this manner, about two hundred men. And all the men of Egypt saw the evil which the children of Israel had done to them, so all Egypt feared greatly the children of Israel, for they had seen their great power, and that not one man of them had fallen. So all the children of Israel returned with joy on their road to Goshen, and the rest of Egypt returned each man to his place. Chapter 65 And it came to pass, after these things, that all the counselors of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and all the elders of Egypt, assembled, and came before the king, and bowed down to the ground, and they sat before him. And the counselors and elders of Egypt spoke unto the king, saying, Behold, the people of the children of Israel is greater and mightier than we are, and thou knowest all the evil which they did to us in the road when we returned from battle. And thou hast also seen their strong power, for this power is unto them from their fathers. For but a few men stood up against a people numerous as the sand, and smote them at the edge of the sword, and of themselves not one has fallen, so that if they had been numerous, they would then have utterly destroyed them. Now therefore, give us counsel what to do with them, until we gradually destroy them from amongst us, lest they become too numerous for us in the land. For if the children of Israel should increase in the land, they will become an obstacle to us, and if any war should happen to take place, they with their great strength will join our enemy against us and fight against us, destroy us from the land and go away from it. So the king answered the elders of Egypt and said unto them, This is the plan advised against Israel, from which we will not depart. Behold in the land are Pithom and Ramses, cities unfortified against battle. It behooves you and us to build them and to fortify them. Now therefore, Go you also, and act cunningly toward them, and proclaim a voice in Egypt and in Goshen, at the command of the king, saying, All ye men of Egypt, Goshen, Pathros, 
and all their inhabitants. The king has commanded us to build Pithom and Ramses, and to fortify them for battle. Who amongst you of all Egypt, of the children of Israel, and of all the inhabitants of the cities, are willing to build with us, shall each have his wages given to him daily at the king's order. So go you first, and do cunningly, and gather yourselves and come to Pithom and Ramses to build. And whilst you are building, cause a proclamation of this kind to be made throughout Egypt every day at the command of the king. And when some of the children of Israel shall come to build with you, you shall give them their wages daily for a few days. And after they shall have built with you for their daily hire, drag yourselves away from them daily one by one in secret. And then you shall rise up and become their taskmasters and officers, and you shall leave them afterward to build without wages. And should they refuse, then force them with all your might to build. And if you do this, it will be well with us to strengthen our land against the children of Israel. For on account of the fatigue of the building and the work, the children of Israel will decrease, because you will deprive them from their wives day by day. And all the elders of Egypt heard the counsel of the king, and the counsel seemed good in their eyes, and in the eyes of the servants of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all Egypt, and they did according to the word of the king. And all the servants went away from the king, and they caused a proclamation to be made in all Egypt, in Takpanches, and in Goshen, and in all the cities which surrounded Egypt, saying, You have seen what the children of Esau and Ishmael did to us, who came to war against us, and wished to destroy us. Now therefore, the king commanded us to fortify the land, to build the cities Pithom and Ramses, and to fortify them for battle, if they should again come against us. Whosoever of you, from all Egypt, and from the children of Israel, will come to build with us, he shall have his daily wages given by the king, as his command is unto us. And when Egypt and all the children of Israel heard all that the servants of Pharaoh had spoken, there came from the Egyptians and the children of Israel to build with the servants of Pharaoh, Pithom and Ramses, but none of the children of Levi came with their brethren to build. And all the servants of Pharaoh and his princes came at first with deceit to build with all Israel as daily hired laborers, and they gave to Israel their daily hire at the beginning. And the servants of Pharaoh built with all Israel and were employed in that work with Israel for a month. At the end of the month, all the servants of Pharaoh began to withdraw secretly from the people of Israel daily. And Israel went on with the work at that time, but they then received their daily hire, because some of the men of Egypt were yet carrying on the work with Israel at that time. Therefore the Egyptians gave Israel their hire in those days, in order that they, the Egyptians, their fellow workmen, might also take the pay for their labor. And at the end of a year and four months, all the Egyptians had withdrawn from the children of Israel, so that the children of Israel were left alone engaged in the work. And after all the Egyptians had withdrawn from the children of Israel, they returned and became oppressors and officers over them, and some of them stood over the children of Israel as taskmasters, to receive from them all that they gave them for the pay of their labor. And the Egyptians did in this manner to the children of Israel day by day, in order to afflict in their work. And all the children of Israel were alone engaged in the labor, and the Egyptians refrained from giving any pay to the children of Israel from that time forward. And when some of the men of Israel refused to work on account of the wages not being given to them, then the exactors and the servants of Pharaoh oppressed them and smote them with heavy blows and made them return by force to labor with their brethren. Thus did all the Egyptians unto the children of Israel all the days. And all the children of Israel were greatly afraid of the Egyptians in this matter, and all the children of Israel returned and worked alone without pay. And the children of Israel built Pithom and Ramses, and all the children of Israel did the work, some making bricks and some building, and the children of Israel built and fortified all the land of Egypt and its walls. And the children of Israel were engaged in work for many years, until the time came when the Lord remembered them and brought them out of Egypt. But the children of Levi were not employed in the work with their brethren of Israel from the beginning unto the day of their going forth from Egypt. For all the children of Levi knew that the Egyptians had spoken all these words with deceit to the Israelites. Therefore the children of Levi refrained from approaching to the work with their brethren. And the Egyptians did not direct their attention to make the children of Levi work afterward, since they had not been with their brethren at the beginning, therefore the Egyptians left them alone. And the hands of the men of Egypt were directed with continued severity against the children of Israel in that work, and the Egyptians made the children of Israel work with rigor. And the Egyptians embittered the lives of the children of Israel with hard work, in mortar and bricks, and also in all manner of work in the field. And the children of Israel called Malal, the king of Egypt, Meror, king of Egypt, because in his days the Egyptians had embittered their lives with all manner of work. And all the work wherein the Egyptians made the children of Israel labor, they exacted with rigor, in order to afflict the children of Israel. But the more they afflicted them, the more they increased and grew.
and the Egyptians were grieved because of the children of Israel. Chapter 66 At that time died Hadad, the son of Bedad, king of Edom, and Salma, from Mesrika, from the country of the children of the east, reigned in his place. In the thirteenth year of the reign of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, which was the hundred and twenty-fifth year of the Israelites going down into Egypt, Salma had reigned over Edom eighteen years. And when he reigned, he drew forth his hosts to go and fight against Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, and the children of Kittim, because they had made war against Angeus, king of Africa, and they destroyed his whole army. But he did not engage with him, for the children of Esau prevented him, saying, he was their brother. So Salma listened to the voice of the children of Esau, and turned back with all his forces to the land of Edom, and did not proceed to fight against Zepho, the son of Eliphaz. And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, heard this thing, saying, Salma, king of Edom, has resolved to fight the children of Kittim, and afterward he will come to fight against Egypt. And when the Egyptians heard this matter, they increased the labor upon the children of Israel, lest the Israelites should do unto them as they did unto them in their war with the children of Esau in the days of Hadad. So the Egyptians said unto the children of Israel, Hasten, and do your work, and finish your task, and strengthen the land, lest the children of Esau your brethren should come to fight against us, for on your account will they come against us. And the children of Israel did the work of the men of Egypt day by day, and the Egyptians afflicted the children of Israel in order to lessen them in the land. But as the Egyptians increased the labor upon the children of Israel, so did the children of Israel increase and multiply, and all Egypt was filled with the children of Israel. And in the hundred and twenty-fifth year of Israel's going down into Egypt, all the Egyptians saw that their counsel did not succeed against Israel, but that they increased and grew. And the land of Egypt and the land of Goshen were filled with the children of Israel. So all the elders of Egypt and its wise men came before the king and bowed down to him and sat before him. And all the elders of Egypt and the wise men thereof said unto the king, May the king live forever. Thou didst counsel us the counsel against the children of Israel, and we did do unto them according to the word of the king. But in proportion to the increase of the labor, so do they increase and grow in the land, and behold, the whole country is filled with them. Now therefore, our Lord and King, the eyes of all Egypt are upon thee to give them advice with thy wisdom, by which they may prevail over Israel to destroy them, or to diminish them from the land. And the king answered them, saying, Give you counsel in this matter, that we may know what to do unto them. And an officer, one of the king's counselors, whose name was Job, from Mesopotamia, in the land of Uz, answered the king, saying, If it please the king, let him hear the counsel of his servant. And the king said unto him, Speak. And Job spoke before the king, the princes, and before all the elders of Egypt, saying, Behold, the counsel of the king which he advised formerly respecting the labor of the children of Israel is very good, and you must not remove them from that labor forever. But this is the advice counseled by which you may lessen them, if it seems good to the king to afflict them. Behold, we have feared war for a long time, and we said, When Israel becomes fruitful in the land, they will drive us from the land if a war should take place. If it please the king, let a royal decree go forth, and let it be written in the laws of Egypt, which shall not be revoked, that every male child born to the Israelites, his blood shall be spilled upon the ground. And by your doing this, when all the male children of Israel shall have died, the evil of their wars will cease. Let the king do so, and send for all the Hebrew midwives, and order them in this matter to execute it. So the thing pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Job. And the king sent for the Hebrew midwives to be called, of which the name of one was Shephra, and the name of the other Pua. And the midwives came before the king, and stood in his presence. And the king said unto them, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him, but if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But if you will not do this thing, then will I burn you up and all your houses with fire. But the midwives feared God, and did not hearken to the king of Egypt, nor to his words. And when the Hebrew women brought forth to the midwife, son or daughter, then did the midwife do all that was necessary to the child, and let it live. Thus did the midwives all the days. And this thing was told to the king, and he sent, and called for the midwives, and he said to them, Why have you done this thing, and have saved the children alive? And the midwives answered and spoke together before the king, saying, Let not the king think that the Hebrew women are as the Egyptian women, for all the children of Israel are hail, and before the midwife comes to them, they are delivered. And as for us, thy handmaids, for many days no Hebrew woman has brought forth upon us, for all the Hebrew women are their own midwives, because they are hale. And Pharaoh heard their words, and believed them in this matter. And the midwives went away from the king, 
and God dealt well with them, and the people multiplied and waxed exceedingly. Chapter 67 There was a man in the land of Egypt of the seed of Levi, whose name was Amram, the son of Kehath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And this man went and took a wife, namely Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, his father's sister, and she was one hundred and twenty-six years old, and he came unto her. And the woman conceived, and bare a daughter, and she called her name Miriam, because in those days the Egyptians had embittered the lives of the children of Israel. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and she called his name Aaron, for in the days of her conception Pharaoh began to spill the blood of the male children of Israel. In those days died Zepho the son of Eliphaz, son of Esau, king of Kittim, and Janius reigned in his stead. And the time that Zepho reigned over the children of Kittim was fifty years, and he died, and was buried in the city of Nabna in the land of Kittim. And Janius, one of the mighty men of the children of Kittim, reigned after him, and he reigned fifty years. And it was after the death of the king of Kittim that Balaam, the son of Beor, fled from the land of Kittim, and he went and came to Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Pharaoh received him with great honor, for he had heard of his wisdom, and he gave him presents, and made him for a counselor, and aggrandized him. And Balaam dwelt in Egypt in honor with all the nobles of the king, and the nobles exalted him, because they all coveted to learn his wisdom. And in the hundred and thirtieth year of Israel's going down to Egypt, Pharaoh dreamed that he was sitting upon his kingly throne, and lifted up his eyes, and saw an old man standing before him, and there were scales in the hands of the old man, such scales as are used by merchants. And the old man took the scales and hung them before Pharaoh. And the old man took all the elders of Egypt, and all its nobles and great men, and he tied them together, and put them in one scale. And he took a milk kid, and put it into the other scale, and the kid preponderated over all. And Pharaoh was astonished at this dreadful vision, why the kid should preponderate over all. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And Pharaoh rose up early in the morning, and called all his servants, and related to them the dream, and the men were greatly afraid. And the king said to all his wise men, Interpret, I pray you, the dream which I dreamed, that I may know it. And Balaam, the son of Beor, answered the king and said unto him, This means nothing else but a great evil that will spring up against Egypt in the latter days. For a son will be born to Israel, who will destroy all Egypt and its inhabitants, and bring forth the Israelites from Egypt with a mighty hand. Now therefore, O king, take counsel upon this matter, that you may destroy the hope of the children of Israel, and their expectation before this evil arise against Egypt. And the king said unto Balaam, And what shall we do unto Israel? Surely after a certain manner did we at first counsel against them, and could not prevail over them. Now therefore, give you also advice against them, by which we may prevail over them. And Balaam answered the king, saying, Send now, and call thy two counselors, and we will see what their advice is upon this matter, and afterward thy servant will speak. And the king sent and called his two counselors, Ruel the Midianite, and Job the Uzite, and they came and sat before the king. And the king said to them, Behold, you have both heard the dream which I have dreamed, and the interpretation thereof. Now therefore give counsel, and know, and see what is to be done to the children of Israel, whereby we may prevail over them, before their evil shall spring up against us. And Ruel the Midianite answered the king and said, May the king live, may the king live forever. If it seem good to the king, let him desist from the Hebrews, and leave them, and let him not stretch forth his hand against them. For these are they whom the Lord chose in days of old, and took as the lot of his inheritance from amongst all the nations of the earth, and the kings of the earth. And who was there that stretched his hand against them with impunity, of whom their God was not avenged? Surely thou knowest that when Abraham went down to Egypt, Pharaoh, the former king of Egypt, saw Sarah his wife, and took her for a wife, because Abraham said, She is my sister, for he was afraid, lest the men of Egypt should slay him on account of his wife. And when the king of Egypt had taken Sarah, then God smote him and his household with heavy plagues, until he restored unto Abraham his wife Sarah, then he was healed. And Abimelech the Girarite, king of the Philistines, 
God punished on account of Sarah, wife of Abraham, in stopping up every womb from man to beast, when their God came to Abimelech in the dream of night, and terrified him in order that he might restore to Abraham, Sarah, whom he had taken. And afterward, all the people of Gerar were punished on account of Sarah, and Abraham prayed to his God for them, and he was entreated of him, and he healed them. And Abimelech feared all this evil that came upon him and his people, and he returned to Abraham his wife Sarah, and gave him with her many gifts. He did so also to Isaac, when he had driven him from Gerar, and God had done wonderful things to him, that all the water courses of Gerar were dried up, and their productive trees did not bring forth, until Abimelech of Gerar, and Ahazath, one of his friends, and Pichal, the captain of his host, went to him, and they bent and bowed down before him to the ground. And they requested of him to supplicate for them, and he prayed to the Lord for them, and the Lord was entreated of him, and he healed them. Jacob also, the plain man, was delivered through his integrity from the hand of his brother Esau, and the hand of Laban the Syrian his mother's brother, who had sought his life, likewise from the hand of all the kings of Canaan, who had come together against him and his children to destroy them. And the Lord delivered them out of their hands, that they turned upon them and smote them. For who had ever stretched forth his hand against them with impunity? Surely Pharaoh the former, thy father's father, raised Joseph, the son of Jacob, above all the princes of the land of Egypt, when he saw his wisdom, for through his wisdom he rescued all the inhabitants of the land from the famine. After which he ordered Jacob and his children to come down to Egypt, in order that through their virtue the land of Egypt and the land of Goshen might be delivered from the famine. Now therefore, if it seem good in thine eyes, cease from destroying the children of Israel, but if it be not thy will that they shall dwell in Egypt, send them forth from here, that they may go to the land of Canaan, the land where their ancestors sojourned. And when Pharaoh heard the words of Jethro, he was very angry with him, so that he rose with shame from the king's presence, and went to Midian, his land, and took Joseph's stick with him. And the king said to Job the Uzite, What sayest thou, Job, and what is thy advice respecting the Hebrews? So Job said to the king, Behold, all the inhabitants of the land are in thy power. Let the king do as it seems good in his eyes. And the king said unto Balaam, What dost thou say, Balaam? Speak thy word that we may hear it. And Balaam said to the king, Of all that the king has counseled against the Hebrews will they be delivered, and the king will not be able to prevail over them with any counsel. For if thou thinkest to lessen them by the flaming fire, thou canst not prevail over them, for surely their God delivered Abraham their father from Ur of the Chaldeans. And if thou thinkest to destroy them with a sword, surely Isaac their father was delivered from it, and a ram was placed in his stead. And if with hard and rigorous labor thou thinkest to lessen them, thou wilt not prevail even in this, for their father Jacob served Laban in all manner of hard work and prospered. Now therefore, O king, hear my words, for this is the counsel which is counseled against them, by which thou wilt prevail over them and from which thou shouldest not depart. If it please the king, let him order all their children, which shall be born from this day forward, to be thrown into the water, for by this canst thou wipe away their name, for none of them, nor of their fathers, were tried in this manner. And the king heard the words of Balaam, and the thing pleased the king, and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Balaam. And the king ordered a proclamation to be issued and a law to be made throughout the land of Egypt, saying, Every male child to be born to the Hebrews from this day forward shall be thrown into the water. And Pharaoh called unto all his servants, saying, Go now, and seek throughout the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel are, and see that every son born to the Hebrews shall be cast into the river, but every daughter you shall let live. And when the children of Israel heard this thing which Pharaoh had commanded, to cast their male children into the river, some of the people separated from their wives, and others adhered to them. And from that day forward, when the time of delivery arrived to those women of Israel who had remained with their husbands, they went to the field to bring forth there, and they brought forth in the field, and left their children upon the field, and returned home. And the Lord who had sworn to their ancestors to multiply them, sent one of his ministering angels which are in heaven, to wash each child in water, to anoint and swathe it, and to put into its hands two smooth stones, from one of which it sucked milk, and from the other honey, and he caused its hair to grow to its knees, by which it might cover itself, to comfort it, and to cleave to it, through his compassion for it. And when God had compassion over them, and had desired to multiply them upon the face of the land, he ordered his earth to receive them to be preserved therein, till the time of their growing up, after which the earth opened its mouth, and vomited them forth, and they sprouted forth from the city like the herb of the earth, 
and the grass of the forest, and they returned each to his family and to his father's house, and they remained with them. And the babes of the children of Israel were upon the earth like the herb of the fields through God's grace for them. And when all the Egyptians saw this thing, they went forth each to his field with his yoke of oxen and his plowshare, and they plowed it up as one plows the earth at seed time. And when they plowed, they were unable to hurt the infants of the children of Israel, so the people increased and waxed exceedingly. And Pharaoh ordered his officers daily to go to Goshen to seek for the babes of the children of Israel. And when they had sought and found one, they took it from its mother's bosom by force and threw it into the river, but the female child they left with its mother. Thus did the Egyptians do to the Israelites all the days. Chapter 68 And it was at that time the Spirit of God was upon Miriam, the daughter of Amram, the sister of Aaron, and she went forth and prophesied about the house, saying, Behold, a son will be born unto us from my father and mother this time, and he will save Israel from the hands of Egypt. And when Amram heard the words of his daughter, he went and took his wife back to the house, after he had driven her away at the time when Pharaoh ordered every male child of the house of Jacob to be thrown into the water. So Amram took Jochebed his wife, three years after he had driven her away, and he came to her, and she conceived. And at the end of seven months from her conception, she brought forth a son, and the whole house was filled with great light as of the light of the sun and moon at the time of their shining. And when the woman saw the child that it was good and pleasing to the sight, she hid it for three months in an inner room. In those days the Egyptians conspired to destroy all the Hebrews there. And the Egyptian women went to Goshen where the children of Israel were, and they carried their young ones upon their shoulders, their babes who could not yet speak. And in those days, when the women of the children of Israel brought forth, each woman had hidden her son from before the Egyptians, that the Egyptians might not know of their bringing forth, and might not destroy them from the land. And the Egyptian women came to Goshen, and their children who could not speak were upon their shoulders. And when an Egyptian woman came into the house of a Hebrew woman, her babe began to cry. And when it cried, the child that was in the inner room answered it, so the Egyptian women went and told it at the house of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh sent his officers to take the children and slay them. Thus did the Egyptians to the Hebrew women all the days. And it was at that time, about three months from Jochebed's concealment of her son, that the thing was known in Pharaoh's house. And the woman hastened to take away her son before the officers came, and she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister Miriam stood afar off to know what would be done to him, and what would become of her words. And God sent forth at that time a terrible heat in the land of Egypt, which burned up the flesh of man like the sun in his circuit, and it greatly oppressed the Egyptians. And all the Egyptians went down to bathe in the river on account of the consuming heat which burned up their flesh. And Bathiah, the daughter of Pharaoh, went also to bathe in the river, owing to the consuming heat, and her maidens walked at the riverside, and all the women of Egypt as well. And Bethiah lifted up her eyes to the river, and she saw the ark upon the water, and sent her maid to fetch it. And she opened it, and saw the child, and behold the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and she said, This one is of the Hebrew children. And all the women of Egypt, walking on the riverside, desired to give him suck, but he would not suck, for this thing was from the Lord, in order to restore him to his mother's breast. And Miriam his sister was at that time amongst the Egyptian women at the riverside, and she saw this thing, and she said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and fetch a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the young woman went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to Jochebed, Take this child away and suckle it for me, and I will pay thee thy wages, two bits of silver daily. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And at the end of two years, when the child grew up, she brought him to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he was unto her as a son. And she called his name Moses, for she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And Amram, his father, called his name Chabar, for he said, It was for him that he associated with his wife, whom he had turned away. And Jochebed, his mother, called his name Jekutiel, because she said, I have hoped for him to the Almighty, and God restored him unto me. And Miriam, his sister, called him Jared, for she descended after him to the river to know what his end would be. And Aaron his brother called his name Abi Zanuck, saying, My father left my mother and returned to her on his account. And Kehath, the father of Amram, called his name Abigdor, because on his account did God repair the breach of the house of Jacob 
that they could no longer throw their male children into the water. And their nurse called him Abai Soko, saying, In his tabernacle was he hidden for three months on account of the children of Ham. And all Israel called his name Shemaiah, son of Nethanel, for they said, In his days has God heard their cries and rescued them from their oppressors. And Moses was in Pharaoh's house and was unto Bathiah, Pharaoh's daughter, as a son. And Moses grew up amongst the king's children. Chapter 69 And the king of Edom died in those days, in the eighteenth year of his reign, and was buried in his temple, which he had built for himself as his royal residence in the land of Edom. And the children of Esau sent to Pethor, which is upon the river, and they fetched from there a young man of beautiful eyes and comely aspect, whose name was Saul, and they made him king over them, in the place of Samlah. And Saul reigned over all the children of Esau in the land of Edom for forty years. And when Pharaoh, king of Egypt, saw that the counsel which Balaam had advised respecting the children of Israel did not succeed, but that they still were fruitful, multiplied, and increased throughout the land of Egypt, then Pharaoh commanded in those days that a proclamation should be issued throughout Egypt to the children of Israel, saying, No man shall diminish any thing of his daily labor. And the man who shall be found deficient in his labor, which he performs daily, whether in mortar or in bricks, then his youngest son shall be put in their place. And the labor of Egypt strengthened upon the children of Israel in those days. And behold, if one brick was deficient in any man's daily labor, the Egyptians took his youngest boy by force from his mother and put him into the building in the place of the brick which his father had left wanting. And the men of Egypt did so to all the children of Israel day by day, all the days for a long period. But the tribe of Levi did not at that time work with the Israelites their brethren from the beginning, for the children of Levi knew the cunning of the Egyptians which they exercised at first toward the Israelites. Chapter 70 And in the third year from the birth of Moses, Pharaoh was sitting at a banquet, when Alperanith the queen was sitting at his right, and Bethiah at his left, and the lad Moses was lying upon her bosom, and Balaam the son of Beor with his two sons, and all the princes of the kingdom were sitting at the table in the king's presence. And the lad stretched forth his hand upon the king's head, and took the crown from the king's head, and placed it on his own head. And when the king and princes saw the work which the boy had done, the king and princes were terrified, and one man to his neighbor expressed astonishment. And the king said unto the princes who were before him at the table, What speak you, and what say you, O ye princes, in this matter? And what is to be the judgment against the boy on account of this act? And Balaam, the son of Beor the magician, answered before the king and princes, and he said, Remember now, O my lord and king, the dream which thou didst dream many days since, and that which thy servant interpreted unto thee. Now therefore, this is a child from the Hebrew children, in whom is the Spirit of God, and let not my lord the king imagine that this youngster did this thing without knowledge. For he is a Hebrew boy, and wisdom and understanding are with him, although he is yet a child, and with wisdom has he done this and chosen unto himself the kingdom of Egypt. For this is the manner of all the Hebrews who deceive kings and their nobles to do all these things cunningly in order to make the kings of the earth and their men tremble. Surely thou knowest that Abraham their father acted thus who deceived the army of Nimrod king of Babel and Abimelech king of Gerar and that he possessed himself of the land of the children of Heth and all the kingdoms of Canaan and that he descended into Egypt and said of Sarah his wife she is my sister in order to mislead Egypt and her king. His son Isaac also did so when he went to Gerar and dwelt there and his strength prevailed over the army of Abimelech, king of the Philistines. He also thought of making the kingdom of the Philistines stumble in saying that Rebekah his wife was his sister. Jacob also dealt treacherously with his brother and took from his hand his birthright and his blessing. He went then to Padan Aram, to the house of Laban his mother's brother, and cunningly obtained from him his daughter, his cattle, and all belonging to him, and fled away and returned to the land of Canaan to his father. His sons sold their brother Joseph, who went down into Egypt and became a slave and was placed in the prison house for twelve years until the former Pharaoh dreamed dreams and withdrew him from the prison house and magnified him above all the princes in Egypt on account of his interpreting his dreams to him. And when God caused a famine throughout the land, he sent for and brought his father and all his brothers and the whole of his father's household and supported them without price or reward and bought the Egyptians for slaves. Now therefore, my lord and king, Behold, this child has risen up in their stead in Egypt to do according to their deeds and to trifle with every king, prince, and judge. If it please the king, let us now spill his blood upon the ground, lest he grow up and take away the government from thy hand 
and the hope of Egypt perish after he shall have reigned. And Balaam said to the king, Let us moreover call for all the judges of Egypt, and the wise men thereof, and let us know if the judgment of death is due to this boy, as thou didst say, and then we will slay him. And Pharaoh sent and called for all the wise men of Egypt, and they came before the king, and an angel of the Lord came amongst them, and he was like one of the wise men of Egypt. And the king said to the wise men, Surely you have heard what this Hebrew boy who is in the house has done, and thus has Balaam judged in the matter. Now judge you also, and see what is due to the boy for the act he has committed. And the angel who seemed like one of the wise men of Pharaoh answered and said as follows, before all the wise men of Egypt, and before the king and the princes, If it please the king, let the king send for men who shall bring before him an onyx stone and a coal of fire, and place them before the child. And if the child shall stretch forth his hand and take the onyx stone, then shall we know that with wisdom has the youth done all that he has done, and we must slay him. But if he stretch forth his hand upon the coal, then shall we know that it was not with knowledge that he did this thing, and he shall live. And the thing seemed good in the eyes of the king and the princes, so the king did according to the word of the angel of the Lord. And the king ordered the onyx stone and coal to be brought and placed before Moses. And they placed the boy before them, and the lad endeavored to stretch forth his hand to the onyx stone. But the angel of the Lord took his hand and placed it upon the coal, and the coal became extinguished in his hand. And he lifted it up and put it into his mouth and burned part of his lips and part of his tongue, and he became heavy in mouth and tongue. And when the king and princes saw this, they knew that Moses had not acted with wisdom in taking off the crown from the king's head. So the king and princes refrained from slaying the child, so Moses remained in Pharaoh's house, growing up, and the Lord was with him. And whilst the boy was in the king's house, he was robed in purple, and he grew amongst the children of the king. And when Moses grew up in the king's house, Bathiah the daughter of Pharaoh considered him as a son, and all the household of Pharaoh honored him, and all the men of Egypt were afraid of him. And he daily went forth, and came into the land of Goshen, where his brethren the children of Israel were, and Moses saw them daily in shortness of breath and hard labor. And Moses asked them, saying, Wherefore is this labor meted out unto you day by day? And they told him all that had befallen them, and all the injunctions which Pharaoh had put upon them before his birth. And they told him all the counsels which Balaam the son of Beor had counseled against them, and what he had also counseled against him in order to slay him when he had taken the king's crown from off his head. And when Moses heard these things, his anger was kindled against Balaam, and he sought to kill him, and he was in ambush for him day by day. And Balaam was afraid of Moses, and he and his two sons rose up and went forth from Egypt, and they fled and delivered their souls, and betook themselves to the land of Cush, to Cacainus, king of Cush. And Moses was in the king's house, going out and coming in, and the Lord gave him favor in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants, and in the eyes of all the people of Egypt, and they loved Moses exceedingly. And the day arrived, when Moses went to Goshen to see his brethren, that he saw the children of Israel in their burdens and hard labor, and Moses was grieved on their account. And Moses returned to Egypt, and came to the house of Pharaoh, and came before the king, and Moses bowed down before the king. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, I pray thee, my lord, I have come to seek a small request from thee. Turn not away my face empty. And Pharaoh said unto him, Speak. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, let there be given unto thy servants the children of Israel who are in Goshen, one day to rest therein from their labor. And the king answered Moses and said, Behold, I have lifted up thy face in this thing to grant thy request. And Pharaoh ordered a proclamation to be issued throughout Egypt and Goshen, saying, To you, all the children of Israel, thus says the king, For six days shall you do your work and labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest, and shall not perform any work. Thus shall you do all the days, as the king and Moses, the son of Bethiah, have commanded. And Moses rejoiced at this thing which the king had granted him, and all the children of Israel did as Moses ordered them. For this thing was from the Lord to the children of Israel, for the Lord had begun to remember the children of Israel, to save them for the sake of their fathers. And the Lord was with Moses, and his fame went throughout Egypt. And Moses became great in the eyes of all the Egyptians, and in the eyes of all the children of Israel, seeking good for his people Israel, and speaking words of peace regarding them to the king.